high school football. Tonight, Ocean City and Holy Cross. How you doing, everybody? Todd Kozineski, Kevin Schulz with you here at the TSM Network. Set for a very interesting game between two teams in the top ten in South Jersey. And Kevin, our visiting team today, Ocean City, their schedule's been a killer. This is their third team they're going to play in the top ten already this season. Well, they have the losses to Mainland and Atlantic City. And Coach Gegenhardt said the big thing is they have to eliminate the mistakes. They looked over things in the films, and they really feel like the kids have learned from these games. Unfortunately, they're losses, but at the same time, he really feels like these kids have had a great week of practice and are really ready for this game. A couple of their losses, too, have been heartbreakers. They lost to Ocean City on a two-point conversion near the end of the game. They lose the game to Mainland on a field goal that tips off the crossbar, so they got to feel like maybe they're due for some breaks today. Yeah, it's really tough. And I think the big thing is, is how well they rebound mentally. This is a team that really isn't used to losing, and especially losing very early in the season. So look for them to establish a ball control offense, really get things going, and the key is to keep the ball out of Holy Cross's offense's hands. Holy Cross, the home team today, has a very potent offensive attack, and they feature one of the best wide receivers in South Jersey. Isaac Irby, he's got 13 touchdown receptions already, and this is a kid who can do everything. He's the kid that they really have to try and keep off the board. But at the same time, they have a lot of other weapons. You have Jason Amir from the quarterback position who can throw the ball as well as anybody, and Matt Chambers is a wide receiver, does the job. Julius Davis from the running back position really gives you a lot right there. So it's really a multi-dimensional offense that City has to stop. We're being invaded down here in Delray, New Jersey. We're going to step aside and take a break. We'll come back with all the action. Holy Cross! Welcome back to Delray and everybody. Tack Kazaneski, Kevin Schulz with you here in the TSM Network. Let's go quickly down the sideline. Our sideline reporter today, Mickey V. Thanks, Tad. Well, I spoke to both coaches prior to the kickoff. Coach Dagenhart simply said they're not going to stop this offense. They need to hopefully contain it. They'd be dreaming if they think they're going to shut this offense down, especially guys like Irby. He's also aware, however, he's not the only offensive threat. Coach Madeira said this game is extremely important because one reason, they want a home playoff game. They love playing the Cape Atlantic. It looks like next season they might not get a chance to do that, but they need this game as well confidence-wise, but they want that home playoff game. They need to keep the offense for Ocean City off the field because they know they want to control the clock. Back to you guys up in the booth. This game between Holy Cross and Ocean City, and Kevin, how important is the opening possession of the game? Well, it's big. I mean... Uh, especially from Ocean City's standpoint, you want to establish that ball control offense, and the key to this game is get something going and keep the ball out of the offense of Holy Cross's hands because, you know, this, uh, this Holy Cross offense with Irby, Davis, um, Chambers, Amir is just impossible to stop. Dave King going to kick the ball off for Holy Cross to start this game. Beautiful day for football here from Delran, New Jersey, in Burlington County. Deep to take it at his own five-yard line is Martin. Martin up the middle of the field. And Ocean City will take over first and ten from their own 21-yard line. As we look over their starting lineup today, quarterback Al Gens in the backfield, Kenny Hanna, Adam Martin, and Brian Coggins. The wideout is Matt Miller. At tight end today will be Matt Chilla. Now the front line, A.J. Jackson, Jeff Blom, Robert Brown, Dale Halter, and John Harris. First and 10 for the Red Raiders at the 23-yard line. Back to pass quickly down the near side of the field. It is complete to Chilla. Chilla's going to get a first down and a gain of about 14 yards. Yeah, Chilla's a big kid in there. He had 30 catches, receptions last year. He's 6'3", 235. So this is a kid that Al Gantz is definitely going to look for as the day goes on. First and 10 for Ocean City. We'll give you a look at the defense after this play. First and 10 from the 36. Ends back. Looking, has time, gets the screen pass off for Coggins. Coggins met the line of scrimmage, going to gain about three. But he gets a chance right now to look at the defense of Holy Cross. 
defense right now. Defensively today for Holy Cross, their front line at defensive end, Matt Deppie. Those tackle Jeremy Hollner and Jeff Whalen. Continuing on with the defense, linebackers Lawrence and Fabio, Bill Rahm, Bill Hoey, and Chris Green. Second down and six. Ken's going to hand off this time to Martin. Martin for two, maybe three yards. That's about it. It'll be third and four. A little bit of a cross buck there in the backfield. You see them try to throw the uh, defensive. Holy Cross off there. They're trying to they're going to try to attack them tackle to tackle. That's something they're going to have to have success at today to really uh, get things going offensively. Give us a chance to uh, show you the last few lines of defense for Holy Cross. Ryan Wolverington at quarterback with Kevin Moran, the safety Chris Stafford, and Ishmael Temple, the free safety. Third down and four for the Red Raiders. Delay near side, here's Martin. Martin is stopped, beautiful defensive play there by Chris Stafford, it's gonna be a fourth and three. Yeah, Stafford came in there, but the, the thing I liked about that is they forced everything to the inside, that's the key, and they got that great backside pursuit from the linebackers there. So the punt team will be on for Ocean City, just underway here on the Tri-State Media Network. In the punt will be Chilla. Back to receive the kick is Isaac Irby. We've talked a lot about him. 13 touchdown passes receiving this year. He is quick. Nice high kick. Irby's going to take it in his own 20. Trying to go with it now. Far side of the field. Penalty flag flies. This is going to come back. Another penalty flag flies. Irby down at about the 46 with two flags down on the play. Looks like uh, it's going to come back. There's flags like probably a clip against, uh, out there, but against the Again, that's the type of penalty that just it drives a coach crazy because Irby was open on the right side. He was downfield. Uh, in that situation, you really just have to let things go. If you're, there's any chance that a block you're going to make is going to be a clip, just lay yeah, off. Clip. You see right here, a little bit out of our picture. Uh, clip had already taken place, but... Irby, with his, as explosive as this kid is, can take people one-on-one. -on -one. You don't need to make that extra block. Give us a chance right now to take a look at the Holy Cross offense as they get set to get things underway for their first offensive series. It's a very strong offensive team. They can throw it up, and they can put the points on the board. They are quarterback today. It's Holy Cross by Jason Amir. In the backfield, Julius Davis and Anthony Cole. You have Matt Chambers and Isaac Irby, wide receiver to tight end Mike Francisco. On the line, Jim Stuffo, Richard Vishkin, Greg Sherlock, Donald Shaw, and Joe Picosa. First and ten for Holy Cross. They're going to start it early from the shotgun with Amir. Amir straight back. A ton of time. Looking. Going deep down the middle for Chambers. Chambers makes the catch. One man can catch him as Foster. It's a foot race to the end zone and a touchdown. 89 yards on the touchdown catch. Well, it didn't take us to get a taste, long to get a taste of this Holy Cross offense on the first play. They sent Chambers downfield on a fly pattern. Irby was the decoy there. He went on a post. He took the double team away. Chambers was one on one and just made an outstanding catch. The coverage wasn't bad, but Chambers just really went up after it was able to grab it and really showed a lot of speed and going for the touchdown. Shotgun in their own end zone and they get the bomb. Extra point try here for Holy Cross. Vincent Ferrantes going to take the extra point. They're going to fake it. Is rolling out with it here is Cole. Cole's going to keep it himself, dives it ahead, and the two-point conversion on the fake is good. So with 9.05 to play in the first quarter, Holy Cross 8, Ocean City nothing. And I want to remind you here on the Tri-State Media Network, this touchdown is brought to you by Pace Orthopedics and Sport Medicine at 54 New Road in Summers Point. They provide ultimate in treatment of muscular skeletal injuries. Pace Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Wow, Kevin, what can you say for Holy Cross starting this game off with a bang? Yeah, this is a very aggressive team that uh, looks to strike as quick as possible. They're a big play team. We said that from the outset, and uh, they really came at them early on. You see here Chambers down the left side. It was a fly pattern. Off to the right side, you can't see that, 
but Irby drew the double team away. Chambers was one-on-one, -on -one, went up after the ball, and just made a great catch and a great run afterwards. 8-0, Holy Cross. 9.05 to play, still in the first quarter. Holy Cross will kick off again. Beautiful day for football here from Delray. We're in Burlington County, just off of Route 130. Temperature in the high 70s, barely a breeze blowing. In to kick off is Dave King. Boy, this offense is outstanding. We see one play and they already are real press onside kick they almost had it a beautiful call again by coach but now flags fly as it went out of bounds on the kick but Kevin they had the onside kick there and I think right now if you're Ocean City you have to stress to these kids this is a very aggressive offensively uh, oriented team they're aggressive on special teams you have to be ready for anything and I think that's something they have to stress to these kids you see right here wasn't a bad onside kick, and they, they were almost were able to get it. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to control it. But, I mean, if he's able to get his hands on that, uh, it's first and ten. Holy cross. Chris Stafford had it just before he went out of bounds. Ocean City trailing at 8 nothing from the 42, first and ten. Quick pass, far side. This is Taylor. Taylor's going to get about 80. He's tackled on the play by Kevin Moran. And I think that's something right there that they have to establish. The short passing game along with the running game. So even more so since Holy Cross came out with the big score early on because Ocean City coming into this game knew that they, they would have to establish a running game, take time off the clock. And if they're not able to do that, it could be a long day. Second down and two for Ocean City. Just across midfield at the 48. Up the middle, going with it is Di Donato. Di Donato will get the first down as he gets across the 45-yard line. And I think that's a big first down here from a confidence standpoint. Uh, you were able to attack uh, with a little misdirection in the backfield, the off-tackle hole there, and you're able to gain the first down. So that really, it really has to help this team mentally. First and 10 from the 44. First quarter action, 8 nothing. Holy Cross. Back to pass, Gens near side, caught by Taylor. Taylor's going to get about five before he's wrestled to the ground by Chris Stafford. Looks like they're going for that outside pattern, Kevin, in the flat. It's been open all, all morning. Yeah, they're going to take what's open, and uh, Taylor was right there. Uh, you see Gens just goes back, takes a quick drop, goes back. And if you find the opening, you have to get the ball back there very quickly because these linebackers and the free safeties, the cornerbacks of Holy Cross are very active out there. They break on the ball very quickly. Second down and five. Up the middle, quick hitter here for Coggins. Coggins has met at the line of scrimmage. Leading on the tackle there was Robert Cochran. And Coggins is going to have to have a big day today. Uh, Jay Costano, he's out, uh, out of this game being injured. He's a big guy for them offensively. Uh, carries a lot of the workload in, in the way of the running game. So Coggin really is going to be counted on heavily today. 7.06 and counting to play first quarter. 8 nothing Holy Cross. It's a third down and three. Wide out to the far side is Taylor. Martin from his tailback position dives ahead for the first down. He was flipped up in the air by Robert Hoey, but it is enough for a first down. Real nice block there by Adam Martin on the left side. He led, led the way. He just kicked out the end. I think that was the key to them getting those three and four extra yards. And you see the activity there. Uh, they just flow defensively, get to the point of attack. So if a back has to make a lead block to, to free a tailback, that's uh, what Ocean City's going to have to do today. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. Young man going to come off the field here is Jeremy Hollander for an equipment check. In to replace him is Jeff Jones. First and 10 Ocean City from the 30. And the man in motion. Far side with the Martin. Martin, good job to cut that ahead for about eight or nine. Ryan Wolverington on the tackle. 
Right. That's just an example of flawless execution there. They faked the Coggin off to the right side. Really threw that defense off. And Martin had the opening on the left side. They handed it off to him, and he's able to gain about eight yards on that play. I like this drive that they have right now. They're chewing time off the clock. This is the type of football they have to play. You see Martin right there. Hits the hole very quickly and just catches, a, catches that, that Holy Cross defense off balance a little bit. Second down and two. It's a good passing situation here. They'll hand it off the middle. Taking that is Cook. Cook lucky to get back to the original line of scrimmage. A nice defensive play there made by Bill Rahm. And I think they were thinking that Holy Cross uh, might be looking past in that situation. Uh, they, they, it was a little bit of a delay handoff there, but uh, there was no, no going. That Holy Cross defense really did a good job, especially in the interior from tackle to tackle. Third down and one. Back is game. Has time. Man open in the end zone. Here's Chilla. Chilla's in for the touchdown. And Ocean City's on the board. They now trail it 8-6. to six. Well, they went with a play-action pass. And I'll tell you, this Chilla kid, for his size, this kid can get open. He can run. And uh, what a job of Gens getting the ball there quickly. This kid reacts very quickly. I can see how he completes 53% of his passes. He can really get the ball there in a hurry. He reacts very quickly. He's a real heady kid back there. And that was just a real nice play. For Chilla, that's his second touchdown catch of the year. For Gens, his third touchdown pass of the year. They will go for two to try and tie it at eight. Gens is back. Pass off man there, just off the hand of Adam Martin. 5.04 to play, first quarter. Holy Cross leads it, eight to six. Kevin, let's go back and take a look at this last play. Well-designed play. Yeah, it was just a play-action pass. They faked to the right. See, they faked the run, the run here to the right. And they were able to draw defense back just that much. Killer went out in the flat. It was a simple out pattern. And Gens just did a great job catching him in stride. He's in the touch into the end zone for the touchdown. I mean, at some point in time, if they keep going to Chilla, and uh, this kid gets open, you might want to think about a double team on this kid. 5.04 to play, first quarter. We knew it was going to be an offensive battle, and it has been thus far. 8-6, Holy Cross leads at this time. Ocean City to kick off. Yeah, and Ocean City has to feel good about themselves with the ball control drive. And another big thing was their execution. They didn't make any mistakes. That's what Coach Gary Degenhardt said coming into this game. We can't make the mistakes. That's what cost us the last two games. Matt Miller set to kick off for Ocean City. Isaac Irby is back to receive the kick, and it looks like he will take this. Takes it out of zone 20. Irby cuts it around the outside. It's going to be a foot race now. Only the kicker can catch him. That's Miller, and Miller does a great job to push him out of bounds at the 35. Well, you can see early on why this Irby kid uh, has been the talk of South Jersey with a 13 touchdown reception. He accelerates as well as anybody I've seen in a long time. And uh, we've done games with the Kevin Harveys of the world. So uh, this kid can really, uh, can really open things up out there. Irby had five touchdown catches against Trenton, four against Mainland, had a punt return for a touchdown against Holy Spirit, and three touchdowns against Delran. First and ten. Shotgun back with it is Amir. Bullet across the middle, caught by Cole. Cole going to get a first down, a gain of 18 yards. He's tackled by Todd Pooster. And that's the thing you see with both these quarterbacks, both Gens and Amir really can get the ball there in a hurry. This kid throws a bullet. So, uh, I mean, you could have to do a good job with the defensive secondary coverage-wise, but you see Amir here, he gets rid of the ball quickly and just throws a frozen rope right there, and that wasn't bad coverage either. Jason Amir over center. First and ten, they send a man in motion. That's Irby. They get the screen pass off to Irby. Irby, great speed around the corner. You can just see what a talent he is as he is pushed out of bounds on the play by Matthew DiDonato. Yeah, and Custer came up in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It, I don't know if there's anything scarier than a one-on-one -on -one situation with a guy like Irby, but he really did a nice job of just fending him off and pushing him out. Uh, sure, he got a little bit of a gain, but... At least he wasn't able to break it open for the big play. See right here, they get the ball to Irby very quickly. 
Uh, he puts a little bit of a mood, but at least Custer forced him to the outside. That's a nice job there by Custer coming up from the safety position. Ocean City calls time out. He looks like a major talent. Yeah, they get the ball to him as much as they can. So, uh, And again, you, you don't want to focus on him too much because they have the other weapons. Obviously, we saw Chambers on the first play of the game, Amir Davis. So uh, it is a multi-dimensional offense. Second and four. They go out of the shotgun this time. The lone setback is Davis. That was the Cole, actually. It's going to run it himself as the quarterback went wide right. So Amer went out wide, and that was run on the play by Cole. That's a little twist. Well, Amir went out to the wide receiver position. You can see they, they give you multiple looks, and they really, really try and throw teams off, not only with the, the, the talent that they have, but also the different formations. And that's what they did right there. That was a real interesting set. It's going to leave them maybe a half yard shy of the first down. Third and about half a yard. And this is a big play right here. Ocean City has to, from a confidence standpoint, if they're able to somehow stop Holy Cross right now, it would, uh, it would just be huge. Third and half a yard. Quarterback keeper for Amer. Amer will get the first down as he gets inside the 10. Uh, you see Amer just taking advantage of that big body and going right ahead. We always say uh, that's the play that's used probably about 75% of the time in that situation simply because it's simple and if you have a quarterback who just has even a reasonable amount of athletic ability, you can accelerate forward and just use his body. So first and 10, actually we'll call it first and goals, they just get inside the 10. Here's Davis. Davis cuts it ahead and Davis is in from nine yards out and Holy Cross is back on the board. They lead it 14 to six. Well, they just hit the off tackle hole. And there, you almost see Irby. That was a real nice run by Davis. Real good job on the offensive line on the left side. But you, you can really see Irby's influence there in that they lined both a quarterback and a, deep, and a safety up on Irby to the outside so you don't have that safety to come up and provide run support. So the passing game really there and helps the running game. Vincent Barantz is in for the extra point. They're going to fake it again. Rolling with it is Cole. Cole passes. The two-point conversion is good as it's caught by Daniel Cadden. So two more on the board for Holy Cross. They need it 16 to six. And a touchdown on the board again for Holy Cross. Let's go back and take a look at it again. Yeah, it was just a simple dive to Davis off to the left side. But you see Irby drawing two players out here, right there, the cornerback to safety, isn't able to get over there because he's shaded over towards Irby. So you see Irby's influence even on a running play. Still in the first quarter with 2.58 to go, and it's already 16 to 6. Some of the scores would indicate a high game as Holy Cross put on 60 against Trenton, 41 against Mainly, 27 against Holy Spirit, and 34 against Del Rey. Ocean City scored 48 in their leadoff game against Holy Spirit, and they can put the points on as well. Racehorse football. We should have brought two statisticians for this game with all the different... Uh, players utilize getting their hands on the ball, uh, the amount of yardage being piled up. It's tough to keep up. Martin's going to let this go out of the end zone and he'll take it into the water. So a chance for Ocean City to load their gun and come right back at Holy Cross, trailing at 16 to 6. Ocean City, uh, offensively, they basically just have to do what they, they did on that last drive, but their problem right now is trying to stop and uh, stop this Holy Cross offense. This isn't a team you want to trade touchdowns with. Ends his back, gets it off far side, complete to Chilla. Chilla's going to get the first down, a gain of 11 on the tackle, Ryan Wolverton. Chilla really does a good job releasing, and I think if you're Holy Cross, Defensively, you have to have somebody really stuff Chilla coming off the line of scrimmage. Don't let this kid get to the outside and get in his pass pattern. 239 and counting to play first quarter. 16 6, Holy Cross. First and 10. Martin. 
Martin going to get to about the 35-yard line to the gain of four, 35-yard line. That is. I'm really impressed with this chill kid right now. He was at the tight end position there, lined up inside. Uh, a few times they, they flanked him out a little bit, but he just threw a nice block. He actually took out a tackle and a linebacker, uh, enabling Martin to get that five-yard gain. Going to bring up a second down and six for Ocean City. Just under two minutes to go first quarter. They split the wide out. Pullback this time up the middle with this Coggins. Coggins met at the line of scrimmage and brought down by Daniel Cannon. Also in there was Robert Cochran. I think Holy Cross to stop this Ocean City offense. Really has to do the job up front. Keep the linemen and keep guys like Chill off of their linebackers. Let their linebackers flow from side to side and make the plays. Third down and four from the 37. First down carry for Martin as he gets across the 40-yard line. So that'll move the chains once again. Martin there had a huge hole in that left side. Again, this Ocean City offensive line, especially on the left side there, is really doing the job. First and 10 from the 41. Now under a minute to play in the first quarter. Gens back. Quick hitter, far side. There's Chill again. It's going to be a gain of six. He's taken out of bounds in the play by Ryan Wolverington. And right now, Holy Cross, they're slowly, uh, or Ocean City rather, slowly, uh, very methodically moving the ball downfield. Uh, you see the short pass. This is about the third time we've seen this quick out right here. Uh, but if you're the Holy Cross coaches, you have to be telling them, hey, these guys, uh, they have some speed. They have the capabilities of going deep. So just watch that. Let's not play up, play up, play up, then get burnt with the big play. Second down and seven. Here comes Martin again. Martin dives ahead. Looks like he has enough for the first down again. Good run there. He's tackled on the play by Bill Rahm. Yeah, you, you have to like the way Martin really fires out of his position. He's great acceleration. Gets to the hole very quickly. And that makes it good. good. It really makes it easy on the offensive lineman. They don't have to hold their blocks as long. Uh, they can make the initial hit. And uh, Martin's through the hole. Under 30 seconds to play here in the first quarter. First and 10. Pull back up the middle. Good run with this is Martin. He's hit and brought back, but not after he gains five. Leading the charge there defensively was Chris Stafford. Yeah, and you're just looking at an Ocean City team up front. That's plain and simply controlling the line of scrimmage. And as long as Coach Dagenhart can do that, Choose some time off the clock. He's going to stick with that style. And that is going to do it for action here in the first quarter. An exciting first quarter of action. Holy Cross leads it 16-6. to You're watching high school football. Welcome back here at TSM. Tag Cousin, this is Kevin Schulz with you from Burlington County, Delran, New Jersey, home of Holy Cross. They lead it 16-6. to not too many surprises thus far, Tad. We have uh, seen that exciting offense of Holy Cross. Ocean City uh, offensively has been able to grind it out, control the line of scrimmage. But Holy Cross has uh, definitely showed their big play potential with Amir, Chambers, and Irby. Pick it up with a second down and six for Ocean City as they flip-flop sides of the field. Back is Gannis. Chilla far side. Nice catch by Chilla for the first down. And he's thrown out of bounds on the play by Lawrence DeFabrio and Ryan Wolverington. And you can see right now they have Ryan Wolverington there coming out to help out against Chilla. Uh, they're shading two players over in Chilla's area. And that'll leave guys like Taylor open for one-on-one -on -one coverage. So... Uh, if Chilla can keep commanding this double coverage, it's going to be a big help for this Ocean City offense. Got to thank the radio guys for helping me out on that one. That was Ryan Taylor on that last catch. First and ten for Ocean City. Gens back again. He's scrambling now. Gets the ball off wide open and a nice catch there. That is Chilla. 
Chilla inside the five and a first down and a great effort there by Albert Gens. Boy, I'll tell you, I am really impressed. I'm impressed with both quarterbacks. Gens on that play, boy, he just uh, did a great job holding, holding under a heavy rush. You see here, they sent everybody. Gens was under pressure, scrambling for his life out to the right side. Uh, you see right here, it looked like he was going to get stopped right there. Bumps it out. He didn't have anybody open in the middle. Rolls, rolls, rolls. See Chill open on the right side and throws a dart right to him. First and goal inside the four. Up the middle of the field. Looks like Martin. Martin's not going to go too far. Martin's at the center of the Lancer line. No gain. Second and Stop in there for the Fabio. Boy, this is just a fun game for spectators to watch. Glad you're with us tonight. Yeah, it really is. It's got to be frustrating, though, for defensive backs. I mean... Both Amir and Gens, their passes have just been right on the money, and we've seen some balls thrown in a very tight coverage. A few of those outs to Chill and Taylor just were right on the money. I mean, if it was a little bit off to the left, they probably balls could have been bat down or bat it down or even intercepted. Second and five. Here's Martin. Martin in for the touchdown. Ocean City is back on the board. They now trail at 16 to 12. Yeah, nothing too fancy about that. Again, they went with that dive play. That was probably about the fifth time, maybe sixth time in that drive. They went with Martin off to the left side. And, hey, if it keeps working, you're going to go with it. So now they'll line it up for, we assume, a two-point conversion with 10-17 to play in the first half. They will go for two. Gens is back, looking, still looking, buying time. He's going to try it himself, dives it ahead, and he is in. Great effort by Gens on the two-point conversion, and it is now 16-14. Holy cross lead. Great effort. Gens looked at two, maybe even three receivers right there before making the break to the outside, and just went in a crowd and powered forward. This kid's got a good leg. And you can see how dominating they are up front. You see right there. In dominating the line of scrimmage, they basically force things back and take the linebackers out of the game. If you're Holy Cross, you have to find a way to, to get your linebackers back into the action. Defensively, up front, you have to keep defensive, the offensive linemen off of your linebackers. So Ocean City set to kick off. 10-17 to go first half. We have a heck of a game going. 16-14. So we get a look at this two-point conversion here, Kevin. Again, step back, look, look, look to the left, look to the right. He was looking again as he was rolling. Then he made that decision to go for it. And, uh, was able to dive in for two. He just made it in. Matt Miller in for the kickoff. Low kick. Irby's going to take it. Return near side of the field. Finds the seam again. Cuts it ahead. Irby's going to get across midfield. Down at the 49-yard line. Tackled by Joseph Foster. It's had it. Irby's very explosive, but I think at the same time, Ocean City just has to do a much better job on special teams. I mean, right there, he had a wide opening on the right side. He said a lot about Irby's speed, but uh, I think anybody back there probably could have at least gotten to the 50-yard line on that play. They really have to find a way to get downfield and come downfield under control. First and 10 for Holy Cross. They lead it 16-14. They go to the shotgun. Run and shoot set. Aimer back. He's got a lot of time. Airs it up down the middle. And that is incomplete. Intended for Irby. They overthrew him. Pretty good coverage on the play by Joe Foster. Foster was right there on Irby all the way. They don't want Irby to beat them with the big plays. And that's something. Now you know Holy Cross is going to get their yardage. But uh, you don't want to get them, them to get it the way they did on the first play of the game with uh, the 80-yard touchdown. Second down and 10 play coming up. Amazing, too, as they pick the huddle, Kevin, how close they are the line of scrimmage. They're only about three yards off the ball. Yeah, I mean, if you have decent hearing, I, I guess they... <laughs> Aimer must talk low or might have a remote control hooked up to the other guy's helmets. We have a penalty on the play. I believe it's a lay of game. Nope. Ball started against the Holy Cross. Against the Lancers. And still bring the ball back. It's the Lancer territory. It's going to be second and We have 10 minutes even to play here in the first half. Aimer thus far in the game has 112 yards and a touchdown. Again, a perfect 9 for 9, 107 yards. 
Second down and 15. Aimer hands off and the ball is loose. Good job to recover that though. Heads up play, that could have been disaster as Davis jumped back on it. And I think if you're Ocean City, you've had such a tough time stopping Holy Cross. They're the type of mistakes that you have to force and take advantage of right there. We're gonna bring you this third down play and a big play here. It's third and 15 coming up for Holy Cross. Let's see if Ocean City can hold this one. This is huge for the Ocean City defense. This will be a big confidence builder if they're able to stop Holy Cross right here. Third and 15. Two wideouts top side of the screen. Aimer out of the shotgun. Blitz is on, he just gets it off in time. A man there and it's caught. This is Davis, and Davis is into the end zone for the touchdown. But Amer did a great job to hold his own because Ryan Taylor cleaned his clock right after he let it go. Yeah, he stayed in there to the last minute. Uh, that was just a simple fly pattern to Davis, and he wanted to wait till Davis was open and using his speed. Amer waited, 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 and really put the ball in the money. And as you said, Tad, took a pretty good hit. Extra point try now by Vincent Verantis. 22-14, Holy Cross leads it. They will kick it this time, and in, and good. 23-14, your score. Let's send it back down the sidelines, and Mickey B. Thanks, Ed. I'm here with Athletic Director for Holy Cross. Mike, finally, Mike, we'll talk about your offense here. We've heard so much about it. Over the other side, Ocean City wanted to try to keep them off the field, but why are they so good? I mean, they're fast, they're quick. It's like a pro offense out there. Uh, we just have been very fortunate here at Holy Cross to get the talent that we've had over the years. And this year has certainly been the same. We've got some really talented players. Uh, you've got to give them the credit. And you also have to look to our coaching staff. Um, they're very dedicated, and, and they're very smart football people, and they do a great job. And one of the things that we're hearing about the realignment in the Cape is they've been loving to play Holy Cross. It's only made them better. There's been some amazing games, mainland against Holy Cross the last two years, obviously last year with Ocean City. I and mean, you got Atlantic City down the road. You might not play the Cape anymore. I mean, what are you, kind of plans are you making? To, you want to play better quality, obviously, but losing the Cape Atlantic is going to be tough for you guys. Yeah, we've, we've been very pleased with our relationship with the Cape. Two years ago, we were both looking for games, and, you know, we were helping each other out that way. And they have been great games. The Cape Atlantic plays uh, great football. It looks like uh, we might have to put an extra digit on the scoreboard uh, for this game here. Um, for the next two-year cycle, we'd be very happy to play the Cape teams again. And, of course, everybody right now is jockeying for position, you know, with football. So it remains to be seen, like, how many games we're looking for and how many games they're looking for. But we would be more than happy to play, play the Cape teams. And I'll tell you, Tad, there have been some of the best games in South Jersey, the last two mainland, of course, this game. But back to you guys up in the booth. Devaney on the return as Devaney gets across the 30 to the 32. Kevin, let's go back and take a look at that touchdown one again, once again. No, you had Irby on the left side with Chambers, so they're, they're flooded over there. You have everybody thinking, hey, it's going to be a pass. They're going to go in this direction. Davis comes out of the backfield right here, just uses his speed, and Amir just waits and waits and waits and puts the ball right on the money. I, I, either one of these quarterbacks have yet to throw a ball off to the left or right. I mean, the passes are just uh, right there. It really Todd, makes it easier for a receiver. Todd Cooster is in pretty good position and just missed that. Uh, the, the defensive backs, they, they haven't done a bad job. It's just, uh, There's Gens across the middle. Big catch and a carry again. This is Chilla this time. He gains about 20 across midfield down at the 48. Yeah, there you see the different look. We've seen Chilla go to the outside, go to the outside, then he cuts it back towards the middle. And Gens throws another strike right there. This is a kid who's got the big body, goes to the inside. And, uh, of course, with a kid this size, he's not afraid to come across the middle, not, not afraid to take a hit. Actually, he's the type of kid that'll deliver a hit. First and 10 again for the Red Raiders. Gens is back, fires far side, almost caught, but incomplete to Ryan Taylor. Boy, these quarterbacks, Kevin, can really air it out with authority. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, we see a lot of kids on the high school level who really put the ball up there, but they don't, they don't put a lot on it. And I think that's big because it gives that, those defensive backs that extra split second to break on the pass. With these kids, the defensive backs don't have that extra split second. Let's take a time right now to congratulate our team that we saw in the first game, Gloucester Catholic.
who started the season 0-2, beat Gloucester High today, 14-7. They now go to a record of 3-2. So congratulations to Gloucester Catholic and their team. Draw plays going with it. Here's Coggins. Coggins met at the line of scrimmage. Nice read and a tackle by Jim Stuffo. Yeah, real nice read, read by Stucco on that left side. And that's a key right there to stop this Ocean City offense. You really have to gain penetration into the backfield. When you get kids like Martin Coggins going, if these kids get three yards into the secondary without being hit, it's going to be difficult to stop them. Kevin, you did that first game of the year with me on TSM, which is amazing what Gloucester Catholic's been able to do because they didn't show a whole lot in that game. Uh, they've, they've definitely improved. They've absolutely turned things around, and that's what happens with a young team. Third down and ten for Ocean City. Back, screen pass near side, it's knocked down, a nice defensive play by Jim Stuffo. Yes, yeah, Stuffo was right there, but you have to like the way Holy Cross defense that play as a team. They were able to put pressure on Gen, uh, they were setting up the screen, but at the same time, they had good pursuit from the linebacker position, the defensive linemen were able to come over and stop the back out in the flat. Chile in the kick for Ocean City. And the dangerous, dangerous Isaac Irby is back to receive it. Irby's going to take it at his own 11. This time Ocean City does a pretty good job to contain him. Irby is still loose. You've got to be kidding me. He, he, he runs himself out of the bounds at the 25-yard line. I think the key is to really kind of cut the field in half against a kid like Irby. You want to kick from sideline to sideline and not give him that entire field. The, the scariest thing is for this kid to get the ball in the middle of the field and have either side to go on because with his speed and acceleration, uh, he can make things really tough on a coverage team. You see him going over to his right. They really force things over to the right. When you cut the field down, it's a kid like this. It's still tough. It's still tough to get your hands on him, but... Now they're able to just push him out of bounds. After all that, nobody really tackled him. First and ten for Holy Cross. 7.24 to play, first half. Amer takes his time. Ocean City jumps across the line. Let's see if they were drawn off. May go against Holy Cross. Yeah, this is against Holy Cross. Against Jumping Atlanta. across is Greg Sherlock. First and 15. Defensively, if you're... you're Ocean City, you're just really put in a tough position because uh, Amer just reacts so quickly, stays in the pocket so long, that if you try and blitz him, you're taken away from your coverage with having the linebackers uh, uh, dropping back. And uh, Amer just can pick a defensive secondary apart. So it's going to bring up a first down and 15 just outside the 20. 7.24 to play here in the first half. 23-14. Holy Cross with the ball leads it. Davis, good hole up the middle. Davis across the 30, looking for more. Brought down at the 38-yard line. Good open field tackle by Todd Cooster. Yeah, it looked like Davis could have even been stopped there right from the get-go. But this kid, uh, on the touch, the previous touchdown, showed his speed right there. He showed a lot of power and speed. See him hitting the hole very quickly right there. Broke the tackle right there, just cut back was able to stop and go. I mean, that's that's just great acceleration and getting to the outside. Great replay by our crew in the truck here in the TSM network. First and 10 from the shotgun, Amer. Amer's going deep down the middle again, has Clark there. Incomplete for the diving Cody Clark. Good coverage by Joseph Foster. Foster did a real nice job coming over there. I mean, it's... Uh, it's really tough, you, and the thing from a defensive standpoint is you really, especially if you're back there, you're looking at the different zones, you really have to keep your eyes on different players, different receivers running across the field. Sometimes uh, from a defensive back standpoint, you, you can tend to look at the quarterback, look at his head, look at his eyes, and with a kid like Amir who looks things off, looks to the ref, left, looks to the right, looks at a lot of different receivers, you, you could uh, be in a lot of trouble if you do that. Amer back again from the shotgun. Going deep down the middle again. Same play. This time Clark on the catch. It's a first down inside the 35. Tackle made on the play by Todd Cooster. But there's a sign of confidence. Doesn't work the first time. We're going to go right back at it. I'm going to throw a strike to you. That's what he did right there. 
the exact same play. At the, uh, Raiders, Boy, what a bullet. That's a great catch, too. It really is. He actually had, I mean, most of these passes have been right on the money, but that was back a, a little bit. He just did a great job of recovering and turning back. First and ten, Aimer from the shotgun once again. Straight back. Looking deep, has a man in the end zone. What a catch in there for the touchdown. Matt Chambers and Holy Cross with six more on the board. Man. I don't know what to say about this type of performance. I mean, they just, they just have so many different weapons. You have Chambers, Davis, Irby. We've talked enough about him. Chambers' second touchdown right there. Uh, these receivers just, you know, they're getting the ball thrown to them very quickly. But at the same time, these kids do a great job of running very disciplined patterns and are able to get open out there. Baranis in for the extra point. Cole on the hold. Kick is long enough. It is no good. It misses wide left. 6.15 to play in the first half. 29-14. Holy Cross with the lead. As we go back and take a look at this touchdown one more time. Now it's a shotgun set right there. Amer steps back and give credit to the offensive line. They're giving a giving Amer a lot of time right there. And he again he just throws a bolt right there. Chambers is able to get open. And what a nice catch! That is a great bring it great in. play. Amer now Kevin six for eight, 227 yards, three touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, Gens he... is no slouch himself. Ten for 12, 128 yards. Man. You almost think you're looking at two pro offenses here with all the weapons and uh, the ability to get the ball in tight coverage there very quickly. I say put Amer in an Eagles uniform. Let's throw him out of there. Jeez. Kid can make the play. 6.15 to play first half. 29-14. Holy Cross will kick off. Nice high kick near side of the field. Here's Devaney. Devaney is hammered just as he picks it up. Tackled by Chris Stafford. Chris Stafford on the tackle. Ocean Hanford City's Hanford. played pretty well, but they fell 29-14. I was just thinking that. It's just, I, I am just absolutely impressed 100% with this Holy Cross offense. And from Ocean City's standpoint, they're doing things. If you said their offense was able to do the things they have done in this game, you really can't fault them in any way. It's just uh, Holy Cross's offense, and uh, there's no better example than this play right here. It's just coming up with the big plays. They're throwing to so many different weapons. You can't overplay from one side to the other. First and 10, just inside the 30. Here's Martin. Martin going to get out to about the 34-yard line where he's tackled by Jeff Whalen. Whalen on the tackle. And it's, uh, Ocean City didn't want to get into this type of game where you're constantly playing catch-up. Uh, the way their offense runs and the way it's designed, it, it's a tough team to really score a whole lot of points in bunches. And uh, they're getting into that situation where they might be forced to do something like that, they have to do something like that. Second down and six. Again, he's back, quick hitter, far side. This is Taylor. Taylor is buried. Kevin Moran, a beautiful coverage tackle there. Kevin Moran the was right there to make the play. Again, that, that's an example of how tight the defensive backs are playing in coverage. I mean, most of the passes that have been thrown have been thrown to the receivers in stride. But uh, these kids can also come up and really deliver a lick. You see right there, that's just great fundamental tackling. Third down and four, just shy of the 35. Martin cuts it ahead. He'll get the first down as he gets across the 40. And that's where he is stopped. Brought down on the play by Ishmael Temple. In any other game, when you're controlling the line of scrimmage the way this Ocean City offense is, you'd be ahead right now. You'd be sitting pretty. 4.48 to play first half, 29-14. Holy Cross leads it here on the TSM Network. First and 10 from the 40. Ends back. Going deep down the sidelines. Man there just a little bit long. That was intended for Taylor. Pretty good coverage on the play by Ryan Wolverton. And Wolverton was right there. And I think this Holy Cross defense is designed to, to really uh, allow the short runs, allow them to get 
uh, their yardage on a 10-yard crossing pattern. Uh, but the big thing is, is uh, I'm sure the coaches stressed them, let's not give up the big play. And that's what Coach Tom Adair said in the beginning of the game when we talked to him. Second down at 10 for Ocean City, 4.30 to play first half. Ocean City playing their third top 10 team already this season. Going out wide now, it's Taylor. Second and 10, again, straight back. Screen pass, here's Martin. Martin cuts it ahead. Martin has some room near side of the field. He's got a shot here. Picks up a block, Martin at the 20, and pushed out of bounds by Ryan Wolverington after a gain of nearly 40 yards. Yeah, there you see Ocean City's big play ability there with Martin. Kid's got a lot of speed. When he gets in the open field, I mean, this guy, kid's got some speed of his own. We talked enough about Irby and Davis on the Holy Cross side of the ball, but boy, Martin, when he gets out in the open, when he gets to the outside, his kid's got great acceleration. Did a good job in the delay fake here, too. Really? Yeah, these, I can't say enough about the job the quarterbacks are doing in execution. And you see Martin getting, getting to the outside. Luckily, Holy Cross had the angle on him. First and ten. Here's Coggins. Coggins finds a seam. He's down at the, about the six-yard line, very close to a first down. Looks like he has the first down. It'll be first and goal for the Red Raiders of Ocean City. And this was one weakness Holy Cross. Uh, Coach Tom Adair said they had. Uh, they didn't return. Uh, too many. I think they only returned one defensive starter from the defensive line so they knew coming into this game that was an area that Ocean City was going to attack. First and goal here comes Coggins again Coggins inside the five down at the three yard line tackled on the play by Ryan Wolverington who's made a ton of tackles already in this game. Yeah and that's that's not good when your your safeties and your defensive backs are coming up with the tackles but that's that's another thing I mean a lot of times if a team's running on you running off from tackle to tackle you'll bring these kids up and run support but receive with receivers like Taylor and Chilla you can't do that you have to keep these kids back to stop the pass second and goal from the four again's going to try and lean it in himself he is very close no signal yet this is probably going to bring up a third and inches well they have to score here I mean even if uh if they're stopped on third down, you, I think you have to go for it. You, you have to keep up with this the Holy Cross offense. I mean, and just keep the offense going on your own end of the ball. Third down, you need about a length of the football as you look at some of the coaches from Ocean City. Third and half a yard to get in the end zone. Yeah, Try it again here in the quarterback sneak. I think they're just going to hit it right up the gut, whether it be quarterback sneak or just... Uh, there it is back. again. Gens leans ahead, and he will get the touchdown. So with 2.13 to play, it's now 29-21. 29-20, check that. <laughs> That's the right play right there. When you have a, an offensive line that's dominating the line of scrimmage, the way this Ocean City team offensive line is, uh, just go with the sure thing. So now we'll figure out if they're going to go for two or for one here, trailing it by nine. Guess you go for two here. I think you have to. Because you know Holy Cross, I mean, if they score again, they're going to go for two. You, you just, uh, you can't, that's another thing, you can't fall behind on the conversions to a, a situation where you're more than seven or eight behind. This is a two-point conversion. They trail at 29-20. Gens rolling, throws it up for grabs in the end zone. Let's see who comes down, but then Chilla comes away with it. The two-point conversion is good, and we have a game going here from Doran. 29-22 now. Holy Cross holds the lead. And Kevin, let's get back right and take a look at this two-point conversion. Well, Holy Cross put a lot of pressure on Gens right there, and I think that's the situation not so much where Gens was actually throwing the receiver. He just threw in a general area, knowing Chilla was there. And, and if there's a jump ball... My money's on Chill to win it, and he did. This kid's got a lot of size, he's got a lot of athletic ability, and obviously he's got great hands. 29-22, Holy Cross leads at 2.13 to play in the first half. We're not even halfway done this game, folks. Yeah, right now, from a confidence standpoint, I think Ocean City has to find a way to stop this Holy Cross offense. They haven't yet, but... Uh, I mean, you have to look for a turnover. Hey, yeah, let's get a quick look at the touchdown on the play. Yeah, it was pretty simple. They just went with uh, 
Again, it's just going right up the middle, and you see right there, that's a perfect shot of how the offensive line of Ocean City is really controlling the line of scrimmage. Here comes Irby. He's been tough to tackle all afternoon. That time they wrap him up and throw him down to the ground is Todd Cooster. And the last two punts downfield, that's one thing Ocean City, as this game has gone on, has improved on. They've really done a good job of getting downfield, breaking down. And the key right there, when you're, if you're on a coverage team, a kickoff coverage team, is to stay in your lanes, especially against a kid like Irby. 2.05 to play first half, 29-22. Holy Cross with the ball. That was first and 10 from the 26. This is Irby territory. He lines up on the near side of the field as a wideout. Two wideouts to the far side. First and 10, lone setback is Davis. At quarterback now is Cole. As a wide out is Amer. Irby goes in motion. Option play, taking it up the middle is Davis. Davis for about three as he gets across the 30. Well, they really keep the defense on their I was, th I was just going to say that. I mean, you have Amer out there. You could have him step back, throw the ball out there, and. Uh, maybe hit Irby in a crossing pattern. Amer from the shotgun with some time, cuts it ahead, runs into one of his own linemen. He ran right into Greg Sherlock. They're going to be a little shy of the fir thir first down. It's going to be third down and about four, and Holy Cross calls time with 133 to play in the first half. Yeah, with this uh, aggressive uh, style of offense, they really want to bang one in here because this is a team that's had no problem moving downfield in a hurry, so you had to think that Coach Tom Madera, uh, when his team started this drive right here, they really uh, were set on wanting to bang another one in before the end of the half. We have 133 to play here in the first half, 29-22, Holy Cross leads it. Spectacular offensive performance. And, and again, from a confidence standpoint, if you're Ocean City and you're able to go into halftime being down only 29-22, that's really got to help you out. I mean, I, you know, with the way Holy Cross looked like they were pulling away, give Ocean City a lot of credit for really hanging in there and scoring the 22 points of their own. It's not a day for punters here in Burlington <laughs> County. The offense is putting points up on the board in a hurry. Third down and four. Aimer from the shotgun. Lone setback is Davis. Two wide outs to the far side, two wide outs to the near side. Amer has a lot of time, still looking. Looking, now the defense converges, gets it off to Irby. Irby across the 40, steps out of bounds at the 43 yard line. Forced out of bounds by Jeff Blob. Boy, they, uh, we should see money dodge the bullet right there because if Irby was headed up field and he had the whole middle of the field to cut back to, uh, that could add it up to disaster on that play. 123 to play, first half. Again, I can't say enough about Amer and his ability to just scramble, scramble. I mean, he looks at three, sometimes four receivers, as many receivers as, as are out there on every single play. So it just really keeps that defense on their toes. Amer in the shotgun again from first and 10. First and 10 to the 43. Bobbles jumps on it. Ocean City had a shot at this as it's a wrestling match, but they'll give that to the offense, if you will, on the jump ball. Good effort to, to get in there by Ryan Driscoll. And that's what Ocean City needs right now. They, defensively, they need a break. They need some type of turnover. They lose three. It'll be second and 13. Shotgun again is Amer. Blitz on it to screen pass. They have numbers, too. Here's Davis. Davis picks up some nice blocks, picks up the first down, and he's down at the 42-yard line, tackled by Chris Devaney. Yeah, they really set up the screen there. Again, a great example of the execution we're seeing today from this Holy Cross offense. First and 10 from the 43, 50 seconds and counting to play in the first half. Gamer straight back. Going deep for it all, has a man there, just overthrows Cody Clark. Went for the home run ball there and just came up a little bit short. And that was real nice coverage there by Bruce Beaver of Ocean City. He just stayed with Clark the entire way. Ball was a little bit overthrown, but I think if that pass was right on the money, Bruce would have been there to break things up. 
41 seconds to play first half. Second down and 10 from the 43. Shotgun formation again for Amer. Amer straight back. Looking. Gets the pass off. It's low. Incomplete. Tried to get to the short side of the field, but threw it a little bit low. Tried to get the pass in there for Cole. And I like the way the offense is set up with the, the patterns, the way they run their patterns, the way they set everybody up. You have receivers spread out over the entire field. No one part of the field is really flooded, and I think that's uh, due in large part to the fact that you have a kid like Amer, if he's on the right side of the field, rolls out a little bit, he has the arm to get it back to the left side of the field. So there are some things you're able to do because you have a quarterback like Amer with an arm like that. Third and ten. Irby lines up on the top side of your screen. Blitz is on. They get some pressure here. Amer runs it up. Amer across the 40, he has a shot to get the first down and more. Gets out of bounds at the 26-yard line. A first down and a great run by Jason Amer. Yeah, a great run. He knew he could go for those extra yards right there, and he was well aware of the fact that he would be able to get out of bounds. A great decision-making right there. He just doesn't see anybody. He sees the pocket breaking down, and Amer uh, just shows some great athletic ability right here. First and 10 from the 26 yard line. 26.9 seconds to play here in the first half. Amer straight back, he looks like he may run, it's blocked. Good defensive play to knock that down by Ryan Taylor. Yeah, they're really keeping Amer in the pocket. Second down. A few times Amer was able to step up. That's what he tried to do right there. He looked, looked. You can see it was like a half run, and uh, he was possibly going to try and throw. He did try and throw it right there, but we give credit to that Ocean City defense on that play. Ryan Taylor really was right in there to uh, stuff things up and bat the ball away. 21.7 seconds to play in the first half. It's second down and 10. Amer rolling left. Gets the pass off. Did he hold it? That's Chambers. Yes, he did. And gets out of bounds inside the 20, down about the 15. Yeah, the ball's a little bit high, but I, anything these receivers get their hands on, they're going to bring in. Here it is again, Kev. Chambers go to the outside. That's about as open as he's been. The ball's a little bit high, but just a, a great catch. I mean, this kid has great hands. He was very fortunate just to get the one foot in bounds. 14.4 seconds to play first half. It's a first and 10 at the 16. That's a good point, Tad. That was just great concentration. You're concentrating on getting the catch, and at the same time, you want to keep that foot in bounds. Four wide receivers in again. Amer from the shotgun. He calls time, so a timeout. 14.4 seconds to play here in the first half. Holy Cross leading at 29-22. Well, it's a chance here to talk your play over, and if you're Ocean City, chance what do you to get do? some air. Yeah, I mean, you have, in that set, you have the two wide receivers on the left, the two wide receivers on the right, and then also you have to worry about Davis coming out of the backfield and getting open in the middle. So this Holy Cross offense is definitely going to cause for a lot of sleepless nights for defensive coordinators, that's for sure. Does Ocean City dare to roll the dice and come in with some kind of a blitz here? I, I think you, you, eventually you're going to have to do things like that to really try and make things happen, whether, whether it be with a blitz. Uh, and, and I think at this time, yeah, it's still early, but from a defensive standpoint, you have to, if you're a second man in on a tackle, think about forcing a fumble because uh, just trying to stop this Holy Cross offense isn't going to do it. They're, you can see they're really uh, having a tough time of it, obviously. First and 10 from the 16. Amer back, goes into the end zone. It's caught by Clark. Clark in the end zone for the touchdown. 35-22 now. Holy Cross with 8.6 seconds to play in the first half. Well, that was just a simple slant. There, Clark showed a lot of speed in getting open. And again, Amer throws another bullet. Extra point drive by Vincent Barantes. To be hold, held by Anthony Cole. Bernard is supposed to try the extra point for the Lancers. Oh. 
Long enough and good. 8.6 seconds to play. First half, 36-22, Holy Cross. Tack Kazaneski, Kevin Schulz with you. 8.6 seconds to play first half. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown. It was just a simple slant. You had two wide receivers to the left side. Irby and Chambers were on the short side of the field. You have Clark out here on the right side. He just runs a slant pattern. And Amer just throws a bullet again. I mean, I, I think there might have been maybe two or three, three passes at the most that might have been a little bit off. Everything else Amer has thrown has been right on the numbers. Amer's having a heck of an afternoon here in the first half. Holy Cross will kick off again, 8.6 seconds remaining. Amor is 10 for 15, 277 yards, and four touchdowns. That's the first half. Yeah, that's, I was going to say, that's a great game. <laughs> Line drive kick, going to try and run some clock. It's a hot potato, and it's picked up by Robert Johnston. So we have 2.7 seconds to play in the first half. This will be your last play. 36-22, Holy Cross leads, and I guess it's Hail Mary time. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's you know, not much left, but if, if Ocean City has any chance to score, they're going to give it a shot because uh, uh, you, you have to score on every opportunity right now. So your last play of the first half looks like they're, they may not air this one out. They'll kneel it down and we will go to the and half. The end of the first Holy half. Cross with 36 Defensive. points Defensive. in the first Defensive. half. Defensive. They lead it 36-22. We go to halftime with Holy Cross with a 14 point lead. You're watching high school football on TSM. TSM the kickoff taken near side of the field. Holy Cross will get it back. Let's go down for a sideline report with Mickey V. Thanks, Dad. Welcome about coach just before the kickoff. Coach Dagenhart said very disheartening, allowing them to score with about four seconds ago. Got themselves back in the game on the scoreboard. He said the key is, of course, stopping them. But can they? He's not sure. They need to control them. He said, but we got to play some defense when we're on offense. The other side, Coach Madeira said, obviously very happy with the offense on all cylinders right now. The defense extremely disappointed. He said, we need to stop somebody out there. Back to you guys up in the booth. Thanks, Mick. Amer is 10 for 15, 280 yards in the first half and four touchdowns. First and 10 from the 38. In motion is Irby. Pitch it to Irby. Irby is going to throw this, and it's blocked. A great defensive job by Joseph Foster. And it's intercepted. They got the interception. Check that out. It's intercepted on the deflection by Ryan Driscoll. I don't know how Driscoll caught that. What an interception. Well, if they're not able to stop Holy Cross, they had to come up with a way defensively. That's what we were talking about at halftime, uh, whether it be a turnover, come up with some blitzes. But you have to find a way to force a turnover. They are able to do it right there. Now Ocean City starting this second half in pretty good fashion. First and 10 for Ocean City at the 35-yard line. 36-22 your score. Ocean City trailing on first and 10. Back to pass is Gans. Wide open, far side. Martin. Martin does a great job to come up with the catch. Inside the 15, down at the 12. Boy, what a grab by Martin. I mean, that, there's no tougher catch than that. The ball being thrown over your shoulder. You're looking back. That is a, that is a tough catch. That's as tough a catch as there is for a receiver to make right there. And uh, Boy, Gens put it on the money. But to, to have to catch something over your shoulder, that just showed great concentration by Martin. First and 10 for the Red Raiders from the 14-yard line. Straight up the middle on the dive that is Coggins. Coggins gets to about the 10. It'll be second and seven. Looks like he's at the 10. And on that last play with the interception, guess who the receiver was on that play? Amer. Arby had Amer open, too. He was open by about five yards. But give Ocean City credit. They came up with a big play when they had to. Going to need some help from the guys in the truck. Of course, we can't hear at the moment. Second down and seven. They hand it off now. Now it's a little better. Almost in the end zone for the touchdown. Adam Martin in for the touchdown. And we've got a game brewing here from Holy Cross. It's now 36-28. Boy, Martin had a big hole in the left side. But I'll tell you what, those 
last five yards were just pure individual effort. Martin showed a lot of power there. He was being drugged down by three tackles and just drugged them right into the end zone. 10.46 to play here in the third quarter. 36-28 now. After the turnover, they'll come in for the extra point try. Yeah, this, this is just a huge turn of events here. and uh, It just shows you what a turnover can do. Here's Kennard in for the extra point. Good distance on that. It is good. 36-29. Now your score. Holy Cross holding the lead. Kevin, let's go back and take a look at this play again. Again, that's the area that Ocean City has been attacking successfully throughout the first half, and they start off in the second half. Real nice lead block there by Cog and leading the way. But look at this effort. Look at this effort by Martin right here. Hits one. He's at the five-yard line. Drags another tackler. Drags another one. He dragged three tacklers into the end zone. Three defenders. Ten minutes, 46 seconds to play. Third quarter. 36-29. Holy Cross holds the lead. In the kickoff for Ocean City will be Matt Miller. And the dangerous Isaac Irby back to take the kick. I think you want to try again, try again, uh, cut the field in half with Irby, kick it to, from one side or the other. Goes out of bounds, get the penalty, hey. Line drive kick, they'll let it go through. It'll be taken by Irby from his own 20. Slips down at the 30, where Holy Cross will take over first and 10. And he had some daylight there. If he was able to stay on his feet, cutting it upfield, uh, fortunately for Ocean City, he lost his footing. So from their own 30, first and 10 for Holy Cross. They lead it 36 to 29. Aimer from the shotgun. Trips wide receivers to the near side. Two wide receivers top side of the street. Irby goes in motion. Aimer has a lot of time. Home run pass again. Has a man there. Just a little bit overthrown to Matt Chambers, who had the defense beat. Chambers was open right there. He had him beat on the left Aimer side. Boy, Aimer really aired it out. I mean, he must have... He threw that ball about 50 yards. And, I mean, that's not a ball that's really uh, had a high arc to it. You see right here, back on about the 20-yard line. 30, yeah, that, that's about a 50-yard pass. And that's a 50-yard pass that gets there in a hurry. Second down and 10 for Holy Cross from the shotgun. This time, two wide receivers near side, two wide receivers far side. Amer's getting great protection. Now he runs, and he is sacked on the play by Sean Raftery. Well, that's one thing in the first half. They were keeping Amer in the pocket, but he was able to step up, step up and funnel himself outside the pocket, whether he decided to run the ball or buy some extra time to go to the outside. Ocean City that time did a real nice job in totally closing Mark. You see in the replay here, he steps back in the pocket. In the first half, when he stepped up in the pocket, he had this right side and stuff, but they did a great job there closing in a little quicker than they have been in the first half. Third and 15 from the shotgun again. This is a screen pass. Here's Davis. Davis cuts it ahead. Davis still on his feet for the first down and more. Up across midfield. He's tackled by Chris Devaney. It's going to be a gain of 25 yards in a first down. With a 25 yard pass. Yeah, that's what happens when you get a kid like Davis here. He's just a, a, a great heady player. I mean, that play to the outside, actually, a lot of times you see that play when there's a screen pass. It's designed to pop out to the outside. Davis right here was able to get open. Uh, that's the previous play, sorry. But he's able to get open right here, bounces it back to the inside. This kid's just got great instincts. He can look up field and just find those openings. Shotgun again from the 49, first and 10. Chambers on the catch, the first down and more as he's down about the 32-yard line, pushed out of bounds by Adam Martin. And another thing you have to like about it, and it has a lot to do with the success of this offense, gaining the large yardage, the big, yard, big amounts of yardage on each play, is for the most part, they're always trying to hit the receivers in stride. You don't see too many patterns where they're uh, hitting receivers on an out going to the sidelines. They always want to have that potential for the big play. First and 10 from the 31. They stay in the shotgun. The 
And we're back. Going to the end zone, a man open Chambers. Also in there is Clark, and Clark catches it for the touchdown. Two wide receivers could have caught it, and Clark came down with it. Again, in the tight coverage. I mean, Ocean City was right there, but Amer just uh, threw a bullet. I don't even know, not sure if exactly he knew who that was going to because you had Chambers right there also, but Clark hauled it in for his second touchdown. Five touchdown passes now for Jason Amer. Extra point try to try and make it 43-29. That one is no good as it is wide to the near side of the field. So at 9.14 to play in the third, Holy Cross increases the lead, 42-29. Yeah, they just look deep again. I mean, we've seen this play uh, probably on three or four occasions. And he's tried it. He, I mean, they've been successful about four times with it, and they've also attempted it probably about three or four, four other times. So uh, even if they fall short, if there's an incompletion, they'll come right back at you. So Ocean City, if they don't look get their act together, they're staring at a two and three season right now. Yeah, and that's tough, especially when uh, you have the, the schedule that Ocean City has. Ocean City's just, uh, they're an outstanding team, but again, when you play this type of schedule, yeah. Lose some tough games. Ball is fumbled, and I think Holy Cross may have this. They we'll have see it. here. As jumping on the ball there was Chris Stafford, and Ocean City does manage to recover, even though Stafford came out of the pile with the ball. I don't know how they didn't. I don't know how Holy Cross didn't get that ball. It looked to me like Stafford definitely had it. I don't know. If, here's another That's a look break at right it here, there. Kevin. Right I mean, here. I, okay. A great shot here. Now there's the initial. Here comes Stafford, number 30. It, but he was right on it. There's the other player from Ocean City, and it's just a jump ball. Jumping yeah. in there, Hannah was the one that recovered it. That's when you, you can win possessions after the play's over and the, the fight underneath the pile. First and 10, Ocean City. Here's Martin. Martin runs into his own man, manages to get about two yards out of it. I think right now Ocean City just has to go back to what was successful that first half and uh, get the running game going. That's what they're doing. and you know, Keep the ball out of Holy Cross's hands for at least the next five <laughs> minutes. Give your defense a little bit of a rest because that's, that's tough on defensive backs when you're constantly in coverage. And uh, from a defensive lineman standpoint, you're constantly blitzing the quarterback. That can really wear you down. Second down and eight for the Red Raiders. Back is Gen, goes near side. Good job to hold on to this by Taylor. Taylor going to get the first down across the 40, down at the 41, where he's tackled by Ryan Wolverington. A real nice job by Taylor right there because he knew making that play right there, making that catch, he was going to get hit. That's the type of receiver you need, and that's the type of receivers they have in Taylor and Schiller. These kids can go to the outside, they can go long, and of course you saw right there, they can go over the middle. First and 10 from the 41. back, looking near side, dropped by the intended receiver, Chill, and this may have been intercepted by Holy Cross, and it is, intercepted by Bill Rahm on the deflection. Rahm was right there to make the heady play, I think Chill might have been looking upfield a little bit too soon, and uh, wasn't able to get his hand, on, his hand on the ball, that's a rare miss for that kid, I mean, he's got as good a hand as you're going to see, and uh, of course he's not at all happy with himself after that play. You see right here, it, it looked like yeah, he never was able to get his hands on the ball. Great coverage, though, by the, those defensive backs of Holy Cross. I mean, they've been on chill the whole day, but uh, the kid's just so big and uh, so tough, it's, it's tough to win a, a tight fight for the ball. But they won that one. First and 10 from the 49. A flip pass is incomplete. That is a pass. It goes incomplete. And it... Amer was thrown down pretty hard, and he's a little slow getting up as he was thrown down by Bruce Beaver. Yeah, just a little effort to get Davis to the outside, but that was almost disaster. I mean, and uh, yeah, they're the types 
the plays you really have to you have to watch. I mean, you you're doing good with your basic offense. If you, sometimes you get a little too fancy. You might tend to get to the point where you outthink yourself and you could make the, the big mistake at the wrong time. Second down and ten from their own 48. Amer straight back. Screen is on. Boy, that's a dangerous screen. Intended for Davis. The flag flies. This may be pass interference. I think you're right about that, Tad. I'm going to stop the clock here and talk about this. You had Jeff Blom. He was right there. Here's your call. Legal man downfield against Holy Cross. Yeah. For a second there, it looked like somebody tried to grab Davis and pull him down while the ball's up in the air. Yeah, well, that's a situation when that screen gets going. It's up to the quarterback to get the ball there in a hurry because it, it's not really the offensive line. It's fault that they're downfield because that play's designed for them to run downfield. They can't see what's going on. They're designed to set and get going. And uh, from a quarterback standpoint, and again, this kid Amer hasn't made too many mistakes today, but maybe then he, he might have wanted to have wanted to get it get the ball there a little bit earlier third and ten aimer straight back rolling he's going to try and keep it himself and he gets across the 45 yard line and this time Ocean City defense steps up and makes a big play. And that's something they've been able to do this second half. They're closing Amer in in the pocket, something they did in the first half, but what they didn't do in the first half was fully close him. He was able to step up, run to the outside, and either buy himself time to pass the ball or end up running the ball. There they really did a great job in closing in and making the play. Here's Brian Foley in the punt. Back to receive the kick will be Chris Devaney. They're coming after him. Nice job on a nice high kick. Fair catch, catch called by Devaney. He makes the catch and he's inside the 20. Let's go down on the sidelines and Mickey V. Thanks, Ted. I'm here with the captains of the cheerleading squad. Probably one of the more fit South Jersey cheerleading squad, because if you notice, after each point, they all take turns doing push-ups. I'm here with Kate Benedetti, and talk about that. I mean, what do you guys do to prepare for the game? Because 42 points, you guys do a lot of push-ups throughout the game. Um, well, we do conditioning at practice, and we take gymnastics, so then we do a lot of push-ups and crunches and other exercises like that. And your team is so successful. I mean, it's just amazing. This is Dana Carlani. Uh, talk about yourself. I also noticed you don't do them every time. You guys, you're switching around. Talk about that. Yeah, um, we switch up the push-ups because if we all do them, you know, it would be too much. So we switch them up. The seniors do it, the juniors do it, the freshmen do it, and the sophomores do it. And we all just switch them up, and we all get pretty buff by doing it. 42 points is a lot. <laughs> and they all look great here. And then finally, also talk about, I mean, the team, you can watch a coach out there working extremely hard. What do you guys do throughout the week? Very intense coach. Your coach, I'm sure, just as well. That's what Holy Cross is about. Well, we go to practice every Tuesday and Thursday, three-hour practices. And we go to gymnastics for two hours on Tuesdays. And uh, every Saturday, we have a three-hour practice. Right, you see, Tad, intense practice just for the cheerleaders as well. Back to you guys up in the booth. Thanks, Mickey. It's second down and 11 with 544 to play here in the third quarter. Gens goes up the middle this time with Coggins. Coggins thrown back down hard. Robert Hoey leading the charge. It's going to be third and about seven. Yeah, Holy Cross now is having a little more success of their own defensively. Uh, Ocean City, of course, was able to stop. Holy Cross offensively for the first you know, the first couple of times this second half, which they weren't able to do in the first half. Now Holy Cross here is in a big third and seven situation, and uh, you have to think these kids were really chewed out defensively in, in that halftime talk because Coach Tom Madeira told Mickey he really wasn't happy with the way they played. Third and seven. Here's Martin. Martin dives ahead. It looks like enough for the first down. It is enough as he gets about an extra half yard at the 30-yard line, so that'll move the chain. Yeah, that's the area where they've had success with uh, the entire day, attacking off tackle, going with Martin. And on a big play right there, they're going to go with it because that play has just worked for them time and time again. You see they bring Martin here. Again, Kaga made a real nice block. They did a good job as they have the whole day, sealing off the linebackers. The linebackers can't get out to make that play. And if you seal the linebackers and take them out of the play, 
uh, your running game is going to be successful. First and 10 from the 30. Back to pass again. Decent amount of time, almost picked off. Chris Stafford almost came in there, and that had touchdown written all over. It really did. I mean, Gens is a kid who can get the ball out there in a hurry, but still, that is a risky play. And if you're a defensive back and uh, you keep get the, getting those passes completed against you, you know, you're going to sense it. You know, one of these times, I mean, you're going to feel like you, you can go up and make that step up, get there that extra split second earlier, and he was almost able to do that right there. Second down and 10 from the 30-yard line. Ocean City trailing at 42-29. Getting from their own 30-yard line. Again, straight back. Has the tight end and overthrew Chilla, who was wide open. Yeah, Pat, he was wide open, and he had some room to run with the ball. This kid this is a kid who can make the run after the catch, and uh, he was definitely looking downfield. That... That had a big gain written all over it. It's just one they just unfortunately weren't able to connect on. We get the shot again here. Just overthrows him a little bit. That's Four where a situation uh, where you see him so wide open, Gens might have panicked a little bit and uh, obviously put a little bit too much on the ball. Third and ten, screen pass. Great job defensively to knock that down, reading it all the way by Robert Hoey. Boy, Hoey did an outstanding job there because that was really executed well by Ocean City. If Hoey didn't come over there and make that play, Ocean City had everybody to the outside, and that play had about a 15-yard gain written all over it, but Hoey just came up and showed a great individual effort. In the punch, Sean Raftery. Nice kick. Irby retreats. He touches with one hand. He has time to recover from his own 20. Tries to outrun one. Outruns another. Outruns a third. Down the sidelines here is Irby. Irby cuts it back at the 45. Runs it almost his own man. Still spinning. He actually lost eight yards from the initial <laughs> game. But I'll tell you what. This Isaac Irby is an exciting player to watch. I mean, this is a kid who had the, was able to to get his hands on the ball as he was going back, but at the same time, you run into a situation where you outkick the coverage and you give a kid like Irby any type of room. Look at the distance there he has between himself and the coverage team. And when he has room and he can get to the outside, he has an entire field to work with. This kid, look at the acceleration right there, Tad, going upfield, but Man. give Ocean City credit. They, they did a good job recovering. That play could have been a lot worse. Aimer from the shotgun on first and 10, rolling to his right. Tends to pass up for Clark, incomplete. Front line of Holy Cross has done a pretty good job of giving Amor time. Yeah, they really have. And when you give this kid time, this is a kid who can wait till that last split second, looks at all his different receivers. And another thing, these receivers, if they're not open, they can add lib. They've worked with this with uh, Amor for a while now. They know him. Uh, if they, sometimes they might have to break out of their original route as they've had throughout the first half and early in the second half. They can do that and uh, work to get some extra room for themselves. Second and 10 draw play to Davis. Davis going to go across the 45 to the 47-yard line. He's tackled on the play by Ryan Taylor. It's going to bring up a third and four. Yeah, the defense is, that's where you keep the defense honest. They're coming at Amor. They've had some success in the last couple of series of downs and getting to Amor. So from Holy Cross's standpoint, you just slip it off to Davis there and you're able to keep the defense off balance. Third and four. Pitch it to Davis. Davis looked like he wanted to throw for a second. Davis lost the football and I think Ocean City has it. Yes, they do. Joseph Foster on the recovery. Ocean City yet another opportunity. Yeah, and I think that's what Ocean, that's Ocean City's strategy. Hey, if we have somebody cornered, if a second man comes in on a hit, go for the ball. That's what they're doing. They're playing an aggressive style of defense. I mean, yeah, you know, hey, these guys, they're going to get their yardage right here. But you see Davis is cornered in, and if somebody has a chance to go for the ball, they're going to do that. You see he reached right in there, stripped it right away. That's just aggressive defensive football. 
Looked like Taylor knocked it out from the 42-yard line, first and 10. The problem is they trail at 42-29. Fake it to Martin. Again, still with time. Going deep down the near sidelines. It's a double coverage. Trying to get the pass in for Taylor. Some great coverage on the play by Kevin Moran. They went for the big play up top, and I think when you have a kid like Chilla, normally you wouldn't throw in a double coverage, but when you have a kid like Chilla who can really go up after the ball, that's a situation where you can go into double coverage. It, I'm sorry, that was Taylor. Same thing. I mean, you, you have these kids who are tall. They can get up, go up after the ball, so, hey, why not? Why not throw in the double coverage? Because if somebody's going to make the catch, nine times out of ten, your receiver will. You see Taylor right there. See how much higher he is than the, the two defenders. Great shot on the replay there on the delay. Here's Coggins. Coggins going to get four. It's going to leave a third down and six. That's big fourth down play here, but I think it's important when you get the turnovers. Ocean City is very capable of moving the ball. Um, from a confidence standpoint, it, it, it can be deflating defensively. The one time you're able to stop them, you're not able to turn it into a score on Ocean City's end. So, uh, yeah, they really have to keep coming at Holy Cross offensively. Third down and six. Martin. Martin backs ahead. He's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. Tackle made on the play by Lawrence DeFabio. Three about a yard. A yard short of the first down. It's a long yard short, almost a yard and a half. Now, obviously, this is a fourth down play where you, you know, they're going to go for this. You need to score, and at the same time, with the job that your offensive line's been doing, you have to figure they'll either go with Martin off to the left side, or Gens just take it right up the middle on the quarterback sneak. Fourth and a yard and a half. Or try to draw the defense off. Give it to Coggins. Coggins ahead for the first down as he makes it to the 30-yard line. Good call there, and they'll move the chains on the first down. Yeah, nice job by Martin leading the way. But Coggins, this kid, this kid's had a nice day. He's led the way for a lot of big runs by Martin with, with his blocking. And right there, Martin did, did the job for him leading the way. And Coggins had a real nice run there for the first down. 112 and counting to play third quarter. Ocean City needs a score to make this game interesting. First and 10 from the 31. Here's Martin. Martin around the corner, just backs it in and dives to about the 25-yard line, which will leave him second in about four. And you can see Holy Cross in an effort to try and stop Martin. You have a lot of the defensive backs coming up and to provide run support. But when you get in that situation offensively, you set up the scenario where you can go with the play-action pass to maybe Taylor or Chilla. Second down and four for Ocean City. Quick hitter up the middle to Coggins. Coggins for a first down and more around the corner. Pushed out of bounds at the eight yard line. Tackled on the play by Ismael Temple. Again, another big hole right up there on the, on the offensive line. Off guard, you see Coggins go to the right. Of course, you have to think uh, with the Day Martins have, he, they decoy him off to the left. Uh, throws the defense off just a little bit, but Coggins it shows a lot of speed of his own and getting through the initial hole and really breaking it to the outside hard. First and goal from the seven. Final 16 seconds of the third quarter. Pitch it to Martin. Blockers in front. Martin is close, but a great tackle to bring him down by Ishmael Temple. It's going to be second and goal, and that is going to do it for action here in the third quarter. One more quarter to go here from Holy Cross. Score the one touchdown. They came up from with some nice, nice plays defensively with the interception. Uh, they stripped Davis of the ball in the one play. We're able to pick up the turnover there. So defensively, I think the key right now is they're making things happen, but they have to bang one in here offensively. Second and goal from the two. Gens on the quarterback keeper, and he's in for the touchdown. So Gens from three yards out, and it's now 42-35, Holy Cross with the lead. 
Yeah, when they get in close, you know they're either going to go with the off, off tackle play to Coggins or Martin or have Gens take it right up the gut. And they went for the safe play right there, just uh, taking full advantage of their dominating, dominating offensive line. I mean, these kids up there just have really done the job. Extra point try. Line drive kick, it finds its way through. Doesn't matter how it goes through, Tad, as long as it goes through. 42-36, your score, 11.56 to play here in the game. But I'll tell you what, this offensive line deserves a lot of credit. John Harris, Dale Holzer, Robert Bram. And here's a perfect example of how they're controlling the line of scrimmage. This is a great shot right here. Look at this. They just overpower that defensive line. Look at the whole group just go into the end zone. That's just a dominating performance up front by this offensive line. I mean, we told John Harris, Dale Holzer, Robert Brown, Jeff Blom, A.J. Jackson. Chill has done his part from the tight end position, coming up with some big blocks on the linebackers. Well, it's a six-point game, so anything can happen here. Uh, amazing. And again, I, that's what we said at halftime. If they were going to find any way of stopping this Holy Cross offense, it would be via a turnover. And that's what they've done. They forced the fumble. They came up with the interception. And uh, yeah, sometimes if you can't do it the fundamental way in stopping teams, you, you have to get out of that and just try to do what you can to make things happen. And that's what they've done today defensively. Ocean City to kick off. 11.56 to play in the game. They trail it by six. Miller to kick it off. It's a shank job. One-handed catch by Chambers. Chambers is going to get across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Tackled on the play by Todd Cooster. Well, the Holy Cross, very capable of getting the ball in the end zone. They've already put 42 points on the board, but Ocean City's made some changes. And they've made some defensive stops, so we'll see what happens here. Yeah, they really have. I mean, I, I just talk about the turnovers, but also another key is the fact that they've really done a good job in closing Amor in on the pocket. They've had a few sacks. They haven't enabled him to get that second look and get it to, out to the outside and run when the coverage breaks down. From their own 40, first and 10. Amor back. Gets it off. It's enough for a first down for Clark. Clark's pushed out of bounds across midfield at the 47-yard line. Matthew DiDonato on the hit. Yeah, just a simple play to the outside. You can't allow Clark or any of these receivers to get that open, especially uh, with Amor's ability to zip the ball there in a hurry. Amor has to be at near 400 yards at this point in this game. First and 10. Now they're in Red Raider territory from the 47. Davis met at the line of scrimmage and thrown down. Ryan Taylor, an outstanding play. And that's something, there, there you see the penetration into the defensive backfield. And if you do that, you're able to disrupt things. You can disrupt their execution back there and make things happen. And that's something they've done, obviously, more successfully in this second half and going into this fourth quarter than they had in the first half. It's also one of the first times they weren't in the shotgun. Now they go right back to the shotgun. Second and 14 from midfield. Amor straight back. A ton of time. Fires it down the sidelines. Chambers there. A beautiful defensive play by Chris Devaney. And it'll be third and 14. Devaney was right there. That was the play. They went up top to Chambers on the first play of the game for the big touchdown. But Devaney really... Sniffed that one out and stayed with Chambers the whole way. This time, Amor had plenty of time. I mean, he sat back there, sat back there, thought he had Chambers open, went up top, but boy, Devaney really made an outstanding play right there. Great shot there by our TSM crew, bringing you the pictures for tonight's game. Third and 14 from midfield. They've really kept Irby quiet in this game, too. Okay, especially in the second half. Third and 14. Across the middle, wide open, and a great defensive play. That was Matt DiDonato. I thought that was going to be a touchdown yeah. initially as Cole was in there. DiDonato knocks it down. The punt team comes on the field. That, that, that would have been a touchdown because you had Chambers and Irby going on short patterns, flooding everything to the left side, having the receivers go to the left side. Uh, if he was able to get his hands on that one, that was definitely an easy six. You see, see right the here. Left side. What, do you, what, do you, oh, what a play. 
I mean, he had all kinds of room there in the middle. Punt team is on. Ocean City is going to get a chance to tie it up. Nice high kick by Foley. It's a beautiful kick. It's going to be taken by Devaney. Devaney by one set. Flags fly. He's going to get out to about the 15-yard line, but a flag is on the field. And if you're a betting man, 80% of the time, you, you probably want to bet that that would be clipping uh, in the clipping territory. In the territory of you know it's against Ocean City, nonetheless. Yeah. So they're going to be have their backs against the wall. Still haven't gotten a signal yet. Here comes our official in. It is against Ocean City. Flag was thrown about the five yard line, so this could put him well off the goal line, practically. Here comes the call, we think. They're trying to organize it out. Here it comes. Clipping is the call, as Kevin indicated. He's going to put the ball about the three-yard line. 10.36 to play in the game. Ocean City with the ball, trailing it by six. First and ten. Martin. Martin gets him out of the end zone, a little breathing room. Gets him out to the ten, where it'll be second down and about four. Yeah, they have a lot of field to work with. They can chew a lot of time off the clock. If you would have said you know, to Ocean City uh, you know, at halftime that they'd be in a situation with 10 minutes left that they would have the ball and they'd be within six points of winning the game and they'd be in a position where they could grind it out and chew some time off the clock, uh, that's really all they could have asked for, especially with uh, the way Holy Cross was moving the ball up and down the field on them in the first half. Second down and four. Coggins this time. Coggins going to get the first down. Nice run by Coggins across the 21-yard line. Tackled by Robert Hoey. Yeah, they keep, keep attacking it. Hoey cross from tackle to tackle and just keep wearing them down. This uh, Again, this offensive line of Ocean City, Ocean City really deserves a lot of credit. And from Hoey Cross's standpoint, again, that's something Tom... Madeira said coming into this game, uh, defensively up front, we uh, really haven't done the job this year, and that's something we were really have to work on. Open at the near side of the field. This is Hannah, his first carry of the game. He makes it up the 29-yard line. It's a gain of eight. Hannah gets to the outside, but I, I think even at that, it looks like he didn't. He wasn't out of bounds. The clock keeps running down. But I think right now you really want to you see Hannon cutting it out to the outside. You might want to bring that into the inside. Real nice block there. Looks like that was Martin, who's had a great day running the ball. And that was just a great individual effort to block. Second down and two, trying to make a game of it. Here's Martin on the pitch. Martin for the first down. Martin still on his feet across the 40. And a first down carry tackled by Kevin Moran. Yeah, you see Moran get there to make the play, but a little too late. Yeah, Martin cut, go up to the left side. Again, up, up front, Ocean City had the, Jeff Blum pulling from the guard position and really getting downfield, making a nice block. Martin now 19 carries, 103 yards. He's over 100 for the game. First and 10. Red Raiders trying to get back in this game. Here's Martin again. Martin, a gain of four. Nice tackle there by Bill Robb. And I don't even think you attempt to put the ball in the air right now. Keep going with the running game. This drive started with 10 minutes and 30 seconds left. So if you could just keep running time off the clock, running time off the clock, chew the clock down and give Holy Cross a limited amount of time to get their hands on the ball, um, it, really, it could work for you. Looking at the stats here, Kevin, from an extra point standpoint, which would be crucial, they are 10 for 13 coming into this game if they can get down in the end zone. Second and six. Gens is back, a lot of time, pass off, it's caught. What a job to catch it by Chilla. It's a first down, the defense was all over. Mishmael Temple on the tackle. 
Yeah, they go to, <laughs> as soon as I say they're going to stay with the run, they go with the path. But that's a, it's a nice, safe little path. It's in traffic, but when you're thrown to a kid like Chilla, you know he's going to win all the, uh, the tough fights for the ball. And if you have a kid like Gens who can get the ball in there in a hurry, it's not as risky as a pass as it would be for some other quarterbacks. They started inside their own five. They're at Holy Cross's 43. First and 10. Coggins. Coggins finds a hole, spins ahead for nearly 10, very close to a first down. Coggins going up the gut. I think if you're Holy Cross, from a defensive standpoint, you have to make things happen. You might want to go with a stunt, some type of blitz. Do something to gain penetration into the backfield. Get back in here. You see Coggins go to the left side. Do something to gain penetration. Get the guys like Coggins and Martin before they can get going upfield. About a half yard shy of the first down. It's going to be second and half a yard. Pass play, far side. They throw it up. Great job to make the catch there by Ryan Taylor. It's a first down inside the 20. Tackle made by Kevin Moran. Yeah, there's the jump ball. Again, whether it's the Taylor or Chilla, you're going to win most of those battles. And that was just a real nice job again, floating it out there. Great play call. Him floating it out there, sees Taylor, one-on-one -on -one coverage. And, uh, he, and the key to that is you have to put it in the right place. You have to put that up high. You put that low, that can be a possible interception. First and 10 from the 17. Here's Martin on a trap up the middle into the end zone for the touchdown. Ocean City has tied it at 42. And now the most important extra point of this season with 621 to play in the game tied at 42 and he, with these two teams with 621 we still have a lot of football left because they're so capable of moving the ball down the field so quickly i mean uh, yeah. here's anthony cole for the lead it's long enough it's no good it misses wow. wide left we are tied at 42 with 621 to play in the game that's about as close as you can get. We're going to try and get another shot of it here for you. See how close it actually is. From where we were, it looked good, but obviously, I mean, we have the side angle. You see it right here. It was down. It was a good hold. Yeah, he just, it looked like, yeah, he just shanked it left. Boy, if he they, missed that, Kevin. Boy, that was he close. He did not miss that by much. 14 carries, 80 yards. Davis, 6 for 35, and a touchdown. Tied at 42 with 6.21 to play in the game. Amazing thing about... You think, about, you think Holy now. Cross had a chance to get one in? Oh, yeah, just a little bit. They're not even sweating this one out. I mean, they have to be averaging probably about 30 yards uh, per pass completion. Irby Bobbles picks it up at the 20. Boy, he is so composed on every one of these plays he has the ball. Yeah. Let's try and take a look at this extra point again, Kevin. Because right now, this is the difference between a tie and a one-point lead. Watch the left side of your screen. Yeah, I mean, you can that's see it was... just hooked left. Yeah. That's close. Well, Holy Cross gets the ball with 6.16 to play. They need to get at least in field goal range. And you have to think they want to get the ball in the Irby's hands at this point. First and 10. Amir out of the shotgun. He's going long, and he is sacked in the backfield. Great pressure by Sean Raftery. It looked like they went with a little bit of a blitz there, and that's, that's what they've been doing in this second half. They've been stunning. They've been trying to make things happen, and they've been successful. I, Amer was looking up top to go to Irby down the left sideline, and Irby was open. If Amer had some time, he would have been able to get him the ball. Clock continues to tick away. 5.50 and counting to play in the game. 42, 42. Second and about 20. and we'll call it 20 from the 14 yard line. Two wide outs to the near side, a wide out to the top side. From the shotgun again. Amor straight back, they're setting up for a screen. They get the screen off, here's Chambers. Chambers up the field. 
Going to get the first down as he gets across the, actually he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage, check that, as he gets out to the 20. Yeah, and there's a, there's a perfect example of the type of plays that they have. A screen, most teams would uh, have the receiver catch the ball stationary. They're able to have Chambers come across the field right here, catch the ball in stride, and make the run afterwards. You see that everybody's focused on Davis, focused on Davis. You have Chambers come across the middle, and again, Amor throws another strike right there. Chambers is able to make the run after the catch and get the first down. This sets up a third My down mistake. and eight. Third and eight for Holy Cross in their own territory. Amor looks over the defense. He has two wideouts near side, and now a whistle stops. We may have a timeout for Ocean City, so Ocean City calls time with 4.45 to play here in the game. Oh, this is a big play. I mean, if you can force them to punt in this situation, and Ocean City is going to get great field position. And this is a team that moved down the field, moved 95 yards with no problem was on the last drive. So you have to think that they feel pretty confident. If they can get the ball at the 50-yard line, use their ball control offense, and they could easily run four minutes off the clock where they can get themselves in a position to win the game in the last minute and not have Holy Cross get the ball back. So this, this is a huge play right here. There you see the situation. 4.45 to play. We're tied at 42. It's going to be a third down and nine. What a game. Glad you're with us here on TSM. Uh, it doesn't get, get any more exciting than this on the high school level, seeing two teams uh, offensively just execute as well as we've seen in a long time. That's right. They're two of the top teams in South Jersey. Third down and nine. Two wideouts near side, two wideouts to the far side. Third and nine, Amer back. This time he has a lot of time. Scrambling, gets the ball off, and it's complete to Clark. Clark for the first down across the 40. It's going to be a gain of nearly 25 yards, and Clark is a little shaken up. Yeah, and the key right there is they were able to give Amer some time, give all the credit to Julius Davis right there, Jeff Blom. You'll see on the replay here, went with a blitz up the middle. Julius Davis just did a great job picking up Blom. You can't see that on the left side. Gave Amer that extra time to get the ball off to Clark. Throwing a strike when he had a defender in his face. And uh, Clark came up with another big catch. Oh, what a hit here. Oh, man. The helmet right on the chin, as you see it there again. As you'll see, watch the helmet right on the chin. Oh, man. I can understand why he's hurt there. Big hit by Chris Devaney. First and 10 from the 42. What a catch by Clark. 421 to play in the game. Amir from the shotgun. Scrambling, looking, still looking. Gets it off somehow. Intended for Cole, incomplete. Pretty good defense on the play by DiDonato. Again, you see the extra pressure on Amer right there, and they're doing a good job of th throwing a lot of different looks there. You had Blom on the previous play blitzing up the middle. There you had Bruce Beaver from the outside. He blitzed on the right side, forcing Amer to go to the opposite. Came from Amer's left side, forcing Amer to go to the right. And defensively, they just were able to put a lot of pressure on him. That's the reason he wasn't able to get a good pass off. From the passing formation, Ocean City has done a good job shutting down Irby, who's been dangerous. Second down and 10. Straight back this time for Amer. Almost picked off. It was thrown a little long, and Cooster came in there and almost picked that one off. Clock stops, 4.02 to play in the game, tied at 42. You can see the, the strategy there. Chris Deveni's doing a nice job. He's in one-on-one -on -one coverage um, with Irby over here, just fending him off. He's not allowing him to get off the line of scrimmage, and we were able to do that, not enable Irby to get in the open field. Uh, you'll limit his success in getting in having Amer get the ball to him. Third and ten, the handoff to Davis. Davis has a shot for first down. A flag flies late. 
He's about a yard shy of the first down. The flag is down at the 47. And it was downfield. That's usually in a clipping territory. Holding. Holding is the call. This is going to come back. Well, they're going to have the option to take the play or move them back. Kevin, what do you do? It'll leave you fourth and one. Looks like they're going to take the penalty. Yeah, I think I would take the penalty. This team can get a yard in a snap, so... I mean, they can also come up with the big play with having the extra down, but uh, you're in a situation here where if you're able to stop them uh, via an incompletion, I don't think on fourth down they're going to go for it, we, especially in light of the success that Ocean City offensively has had. Uh, that with fourth down, Holy Cross is definitely going to have to punt the ball away. Third down and 15. And Mirren shotgun formation again. Irby, a wide out to the bottom side of your screen. Third and 15. Pressure on across the middle, and it's caught by Chambers. Chambers is going to get the first down into Ocean City territory at the 44. And Devetti was right there. I mean, again, I am just so impressed at the way Amer has thrown in the tight coverage and gotten the ball there in a hurry. Uh, better than any high school quarterback I've ever seen. Look, watch this bullet right here. Right on the money to Chambers. Devenny, right right there. You have just a limited amount of time to get the ball there, and the timing on that play is just outstanding. First and 10 from the 44. 318 and counting to play in the game. And off to Davis. Davis around the left corner. Tries to push it ahead. He is pushed out of bounds on the play by Sean Raftery. It's going to be a gain of about four or five and take him to the 40 where he'll be second down and six. Real great individual effort there by Davis with the blitzing and the stunning up front that you're seeing from the Ocean City defense. They're able to gain that penetration into the backfield that they weren't able to gain in the first half. And uh, Davis was really caught up there in the middle, but he adjusted and was able to get to the outside and get five yards where a lot of backs would have been caught in the backfield. Second down and six from the 40-yard line. 308 to play in the game, tied at 42. Amir from the shotgun. He's going to do a quarterback draw, taking ahead for the first down and more. Good job to read him at the line of scrimmage. Dale Dozier, but enough for a first down at the 33 yard line. That's just great sense to pick that up. Ocean City going, really going with an outside in blitz, and that middle was wide open. They didn't have anybody covering the middle. Amer picked it up, and uh, you know, just another heady play from the senior quarterback. Watch Dale Holzer here on the tackle. He hits him with pretty good authority at the end of this play. Yeah, and that's it. If you uh, if you get into this secondary, or you're going to take a hit, whether it be Amer or one of the receivers. These Ocean City defenders really make you pay for it. Get the pass out to Clark. Clark to about the 25. It'll leave it second and down and about three. Gained about seven, six and a half yards on the play. It's going to be second and about three and a half. Time ticking away. 2.20 and counting to play in this game. Tied at 42. And I think right now the, the strategy in light of Ocean City's success defensively um, in this second half, in getting to Amer, now I think they're going with the quicker drops and having Amer get rid of the ball quicker. Lone setback is Davis. Second down, and we'll call it four. Davis takes it. Davis leans ahead. He is very close to the first down. Raftery in there on the tackle. Close to the first down. They're looking it over now. They may need to change. Yeah, they're going to come out and measure this. With 141 to play in the game. Here comes the measurement. Remember, overtime is interesting, to say the least. Both teams will get an opportunity at the 25-yard line if we should go overtime. And we've had a few games do that this year. And that, that will be exciting today with... Uh, especially in the situation where there's no lack of offensive production from either team. Measurement, first down. Lancer, first, first down. First and 10 from the 22. 
Well, we're not talking overtime yet. We still have 1.41 to play in the game. Tied at 42. It's going to be first and 10 from the 22. Amer's going to line it up in the shotgun. Two wide outs to the right, two wide outs to the left. Lone back is Davis. Clock starts and starts winding. 138 and counting. Amir from the shotgun. Blitz is on. Gets by one. Good job to bring him down on the tackle by Ryan Driscoll. Losing five yards on the play. And you see Driscoll right there coming in. Late. He, he covered the middle right there. They had uh, Amer on a previous play was able to get up in the middle and gain about 10 yards on a play. But uh, Amer from the shotgun. Straight back. Decent amount of time going up to the end zone. A man there. Great catch for the touchdown. Matt Chambers. And Holy Cross takes the lead with 111 to play in the game. Perfect throw, but what an unbelievable catch by Chambers diving on the ground. And again, it, it, there was tight coverage right there. You see Chambers coming across the middle making a diving catch. What a grab right there by Chambers. A little low part of our camera, but boy, he had to really get down there and get after it in a hurry. And that ball was uh, thrown low, but right where it had to be thrown. Extra point try for King. It is long enough. It is good. 1-11 to play in the game. 49-42. Holy Cross leads. And there were some big plays there. Holy Cross had their backs against the wall, Tad. You remember that third down play back here where it was about third and eight. And Hamer came with, up with the big pass play to Clark to keep the drive going. And then you come up with the big touchdown pass to Chambers right there. Boy, these kids have had one hell of a day. Let's update Amer's stats. 19, 19 for 30, six touchdowns. Holy cow, and 444 yards. So over 20 yards, I mean, it seems like he's thrown more passes than that. It's just that he's, yeah, they've gained so much yardage per pass play. Let's get one more quick look at the touchdown here. And this is just a perfect example of Amer's Right, right. Well, this is the That's previous a little one. before that, but a great catch. We have 111 to play in the game. 49-42 Holy Cross. Line drive kick. Martin's going to take it at about his own 11. Nice tackle diving in there by Kevin Moran. Well, Ocean City has 106 to work with. They'll have the ball at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. If they get a touchdown, an extra point, it can send us into overtime. Yeah, this, this is definitely a team that's capable of moving the ball downfield. The thing is, you see the touchdown play there. I mean, that, that's just a perfect example of uh, the way Amer can get the ball there in a hurry. Something you don't normally see in a high school, in a high school quarterback, the ability to just throw the ball 25 yards across the middle on a line. That was a frozen rope right there. Gens on first and ten. Straight back. Rolling. Gets the ball off and it's caught by Chilla. Chilla's hammered after a gain of eight. Tackled by Chris Stafford. Yeah, and Holy Cross will take that. I mean, they'll take the sure pass plays and they're able to keep Chilla in bounds. But I think Gens has to look downfield and get the ball in uh, an open field runner hand like, like Martin. Here's the handoff up the middle to Coggins. He'll get the first down. Stops the clock to move the chains with 39.6 seconds to play. There you see the situation here. Holy Cross by seven. They'll start the clock now, and here comes the play. First and ten. Again, straight back. Goes down the sidelines. Man there, almost picked off by Kevin Moran. Passes intended for Chris Devaney. Yeah, Moran was right there to make in coverage. He was with Devaney the entire way. 30.3 seconds to play in the game. You see Gens going to Moran. Moran just back, back. He knows the one thing you don't want to do right now is let the receiver get behind you. Second down and 10. 
from their own 35 yard line. Gets it off. Martin Aram the catch. He falls down. Otherwise, he had a touchdown. Falls down at the 36, first and 10. Well, he's the one game breaker. Well, across it on there, and they have a lot of game breakers, but Ocean City uh, with Martin. He's the one game breaker. And I think he's the guy whose hands you have to get the ball into. And I'm sure Degenhart feels the same way. See right here again, steps back, has enough time, throws a bullet. And boy, yeah, that was six right there, Todd, if he was able to stay on his feet. What? Again, you really want to, you know, you're in the situation now, the closer you get, you can put the ball in the end zone, and you have the receivers such as Chilla and Taylor who can go up after the ball, or if you throw the ball out in the flat to a kid like Martin who can make things happen. Uh, they're just a, a few of the options that you have right now. First and 10 from the 36, 24.8 seconds to play in the game. Again, straight back. Looking, looking, he's gone for it all, into the end zone, it's a duck. Taylor there, Taylor can't make the catch. There are still 16 seconds to play. Great defensive coverage in there, Ishmael Temple. Yeah, and that's tough, and that's, that's what they're thinking right now, if you're Ocean City, we have the tall receivers, we're gonna go up top, we know these kids are going to be covered, but at the same time, we feel we have a good shot of winning a jump ball, and boy, Taylor came uh, a few inches away from really grabbing this one in. You see him going deep. Looks Moran was right there with him. Oh. And uh, boy, if he could have second hands on 10. that one. 16.2 seconds to play. Gens for a quick hitter this time and it's dropped. Chris Devaney had it and dropped it. Still 12.5 to play. Yeah, if you could get your hands on that, and of course they have the one timeout remaining, so if he was tackled in the, little, in the middle of the field, that's when you'd have to burn that last timeout. Uh, right now you have to figure they have definitely two plays left, maybe three at the most. Third down in 10, trailing at 49-42. 12.5 to play in the game. Third and 10. Gens back, looking far side of the field, and in incomplete, intended for Devaney. Fourth and 10, and this is the game. Well, with 8.9 seconds left, uh, I think you have to go up top, and you want your two big guys, Chilla, in the, Chilla and Taylor, in the end zone. I think that's, uh, that's your only shot right now. Cross team that piled up 36 points in the first half. So to hold them and keep Irby in check in the second half, and it says a lot about the, the gutty effort that we saw defensively. Here's how close we just came to a tie ball game. Yeah, you see Taylor going up for it. And I think that's what we're going to see right now. You have to go to the end zone. Here we go. Fourth and ten. This is the game with 8.9 seconds to play. Again, straight back. Decent amount of time. He's gone for the end zone. For the game. Up for a grab. Incomplete. And Holy Cross is going to win it. They have won it as the time has expired. They win it 49-42. This has to be one of the best football games on the high school level I've seen in a long time, if ever. I mean, you, you had two outstanding teams just the, the offensive output, the big plays from Holy Cross were outstanding. Ocean City, with the way they regrouped at halftime, and were able to come and not totally stop Holy Cross in the second half, but keep them in check, keep Irby in check. Uh, you just hate to see a team, any team lose a game, but uh, it was just an outstanding effort. And, uh, if there's a better team with three losses in South Jersey than Ocean City. I, I don't know which one it is. You see right here the final play, uh, which we pretty much expected. They're going to throw it up for grabs. You have Chilla and a host of defenders there from oh. Holy Cross. And, and look, he uh, just missed it. Devaney yeah. just missed that. I mean, that's the old Big, play, Big Ben play when you just have the jump ball and have your receiver in front of everything, and Devaney was just unable to come up with the ball. Well, Holy Cross wins it in a nail-biter, 49-42. We'll step aside and come back with the post-game show with Mickey V down on the field right after this. The key touchdown, the game-winning touchdown.
Well, set it up for us. I mean, you really you laid yourself out on that play. Yeah, I did. It was a, it was a good pass by uh, Amor to get the ball to me. So. I know, you know, they talk so much about this Holy Cross team offense. It's just insurmountable, really. And Isaac Irby seems to get most of the headlines. But all around, you got some of the best receivers in the whole league. Why do you think you guys aren't so good like that? We do. We just have a lot of good kids that come here. We have uh, people from all over, like, you know, South Jersey that, that come to the school to play football. So. I know also, well, before we came to the game, up on the scoreboard before the game was last year, scored 34-22. I know Coach wasn't real happy about that because he believes in forgetting about last year. But maybe I know about you, but some of the other players, how much did that motivate you about losing last year, wanting to beat this Ocean City? We did a lot. We, uh, we, we keyed all week on getting revenge on these guys. They, they knocked us out of number one contention last year, and we, we, we were out for revenge today. And I, I mean, you guys can breathe a little bit now, I mean, because yeah. what a ball game. I mean, one of the better games we've seen here in South Jersey. Yeah, it was. We, it was a real excellent game. I mean, we played well. The Ocean City played well. We just came out on top. All right, great game, Jason. We, we really appreciate it. Yeah, Matt Chambers. We're going to bring him Jason Jason Amer, the quarterback here. And Jason, I mean, Jason, great game. Your arm must be a little tired out there. You really aired it out today. Yeah, it's not tired at all. I'm used to throwing 40 times a game. I don't know how many I threw today, but, whew, man, what a game. Well, talk about your receiver. We just talked to Matt Chambers, one of our TSN players of the game. You know, Isaac gets most of the headlines around here, but you, all around, you got so many receivers. It's not just Isaac, obviously. I had, what, five to go the other day? And Chambers, oh, she stepped it out really big. And to make that dive in the end zone and win the game, you know, we, we practiced that over here. We got a little pad, and we just diving the whole time, and it was, it was just great. Well, talk about, you know, first half, you guys scored 35 points. Second half, I mean, just at seven, Ocean City's defense stepped it up a little bit. What were you guys offensively talking about on the sideline? Because you know you can move the ball. Was it confidence, a couple turnovers, or I think it was just a couple letdowns. I don't, they, they they did step it up a little bit, but we just we just gave it to them. You know, we were marching down the field, fumble here, interception there. You know, it was it was all right. I know early in the week Ed talked to coach and he indicated you wanted to win because you want that home playoff game. It looks like you might secure that now. But now, what do you guys got to do to keep? I mean, because you know teams play Holy Cross, it's almost like a Super Bowl for them because they want to step it up. What do you got to do to beat Cinnamon next week? So doing exactly what we did today. You know, defensively got to step it up. Offensively, you know, we can put put points on the board, you know, just air it out again. And we talk about every time you guys seem to play the Cape Atlantic, it seems to be one of the best games in South Jersey, the mainland game this year, the mainland game last year, last year against Ocean City. As I mentioned to Matt, up on the scoreboard, we saw 34-22, which was last year's score. And Coach likes to forget about last year. But I don't know if you saw that, but how much of it was going through your mind you want to beat these guys this year? It's hard, hard to forget for me. I mean, last year was my lone start. And, you know, I was 0-1 as a starter right off the bat as a junior. And, you know, it's... I've been watching film on these guys for six months now, ever since we lost that game. And it was just great to beat them today, get some revenge. All right, great game, Jason. Right, we really appreciate it. We're going to bring in Coach Tom Madeira right now. And, Coach, we talked about it earlier before the game. When you played the Cape Atlantic, it always seems to be, this is debated to be one of the best games in South Georgia of all time. Talk about your thoughts about the game. Well, I'm just glad that we won, you know, number one. But as I was telling somebody earlier, I don't care who you were rooting for today. When you left the stadium, you saw one heck of a high school football game. Uh, I'm just glad that this year we came out on, on, on the winning side of it. But uh, right down to the last play, it was exciting. Uh, I tell people, I, I don't know if we're any good or not, but we're fun to watch. I mean, we'll kick onside kicks. We'll, we'll fake extra points. We're fun to watch, and uh, we usually keep them close. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about that because last night we were at a ball game where it looked like EHT kicked an onside. He said it was a mistake, a muff. Yours looked like it was designed. Yeah, uh, we had noticed that uh, they bunched up uh, in the middle there, and uh, I think it was number 88 had his back turned. And after we wanted to see him do it once after the first kickoff, you know, I said, you know, it's there, let's do it. Now we didn't execute. I mean, we had it, had it in our hands, and let it go through our hands out of bounds. You know, we should have executed that. But it, if it's there, if things are there, we're going to do it. Just like the fake extra points, they come very hard from the outside, and so we said we're going to do that and force them to stop it. So we don't gamble as much as people think. We do it when we know it's there. We just have to execute. If we execute, it's there. You know, we're okay. We didn't execute the onside kick, unfortunately. Oh, uh, you did great on the scoreboard, 49 points. Did you see anything in the secondary? I mean, was there, I mean, I know Jared Toscano, one of their big leaders in the secondary, not in for the ball game, and Jason had a lot of time, a lot of holes out there. I mean, did you see anything you wanted to exploit? Or? Well, not really. What we're looking for, number one, is what they're trying to do to stop us. And, and most teams, and, and Ocean City included, they look at number 22 and say, we're going to try to take you out of the ball game. And I think they did a good job taking him out of the football game. So we go to other people. Uh, right before halftime, we had a screen called to our tailback that was there. But Jason called timeout. He says, Coach, he says, they're really overplaying Isaac. He says, we got the middle of the field wide open to Cody. He says, let's run an eight to Cody. So, all right, run an eight to Cody. You know, touchdown. So if you try to take somebody out of the game and overplay them with different people, 
we have enough weapons uh, to, to, to go to other people. Matt Chambers, Cody Clark came up big today. Julius Davis catching the football. I mean, the guys came up big. I know they always talk so much about Isaac Kirby, but also talk of finally and we'll let you go. On the scoreboard before the game was last year's score, you mentioned to me before the game, you don't want to even think about last year. Focus on this week, then next week, after this week is over. But a couple of players indicated they couldn't forget, and that really motivated them a little bit. But how do you get them now to emotionally not have a letdown against Cinnamon next week? Well, you know, we're fighting for a home playoff game, and, and that's the big thing. You know, and, and, and I know I don't talk about next year. I tried, or last year, and I don't worry about next year. I worry about right now. But I know our kids. We, we're not in position every year to have payback games, you know, one, once a year, twice. Last year we had no payback games because we lost in, uh, in the playoffs and we lost uh, against a team we don't play anymore. Well, so this year was, was one of our payback games, you know, and uh, so, I, you know, it's natural for kids to do that. I don't think about that. I'm worried about a home playoff advantage right now. That's the only thing I'm working, worried about. And I'm going to talk to our team about Cinnaminson and being a home playoff game. Uh, also, with, you know, with Cinnamons, and offensively, I think, I think we're pretty good. But defensively, we can't overlook anybody. Jesus, I mean, I, mean, if we, if we, I, I make this joke. I said the Marlton 135s would score, would score 28 points on us. So, so we've got to get better defensively. All right, appreciate it. Great game, Thank Coach. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Game. Appreciate it. Again, Tad, 49-42, certainly debatably one of the better games all time in South Jersey. I know mainland Holy Cross will have something to say about that. But back to you guys up in the booth. Thanks a lot there, Mickey. And uh, Kevin, uh, Coach, a couple comments there, talking a little about his defense and how he really needs to get something going defensively for his team. Obviously, they have to step it up. Uh, defensively, they, they didn't do the job. There. Well, that is going to do it for one of our best football games I think I've seen in 10 years of doing these games. Glad you could be with us here. on.